centuries ago, the Malian emperor Mansa Musa sent his best and brightest scholars, explorers, warriors, and artisans across the great western ocean to discover new lands. They were never heard from again. Until now. Join creative director Tanya DePass as Invicta, the High and Old Blade Keeper, DJ Knight as Ikemba, the Musalian Bio-Priest, Michael Sinclair II as Eli, the Misajai Lightbringer, Christina Ariel as Sila 919, the Monsagene Bio-Priest, and Eugenio Vargas as the Storyteller, as they travel the stars, defend their homes, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. Welcome to the Motherlands. Happy Sunday, happy time zone, and welcome back to the Motherlands. My name is Eugenio. You might know me as DM Jazzy Hins. I am the storyteller for Into the Motherlands, and I am very, very happy to finally welcome you all back uh, to our game. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I cannot believe this is episode 10 of 12 already, just three more, including tonight's episode, uh, What Will Happen to Our Intrepid Space Adventures. Uh, before we find out, we should probably tell you who those space adventurers are. So let's go ahead and go around uh, and everyone can let us know uh, who you are, who you're playing, uh, and let's begin this evening with our host uh, for the series, Tanya. Hello, uh, I'm your Blade Keeper, Tanya, uh, also known as Invicta. Pronouns are she, her, both for myself and Invicta. And uh, I need to know what sent our Hathray friends screaming from the room. Yeah, that was quite, quite the moment that we ended on last week. I can't wait to find out myself. Uh, moving on around in a counterclockwise direction today. Why not? We'll mix it up, which means that we are heading down to my friend DJ. Oh, hi. I'm DJ Knight, uh, playing Kemba, Masalian Bio Priest, DM pronouns. That, that'll yeah. do. That's yeah. it. Look, that's the important stuff. We want to know what happened. Continuing on around the horn over to Michael. Yo, 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 what up? No, it's, it's Michael Sinclair. <laughs> <laughs> Second, I uh, go by Michael Critz everywhere. Uh, today I'm playing Eli. Their pronouns are they, them. Um, my pronouns are he, him, and uh, Eli is a Misajai um, light bringer and excited to play today. Indeed, and last but most certainly not least, Christina. Hello, my name is Christina Ariel, and I play Captain Sila 919, and she is a Monsagene bio priest, and her motto is do it right or get out of my way. And I think she lives up to that thing. So. Let's go do a thing and have an adventure. I think those are all grand ideas. Uh, once again, my name is Eugenio. I am DM Jazzy Hands on the interwebs, uh, and I'm your storyteller for this evening. So uh, we're going to get to our beloved recap here in a moment, which will undoubtedly be filled with exciting action and suspense. Uh, but before we do that, uh, some announcements and some thank yous. As always, uh, we've got some folks that we want to thank for uh, giving us the ability to be here with you all this evening for the last nine weeks and for the next two after this one. We want to thank, of course, Die Hard Dice for supporting our endeavors into the motherlands. Uh, of course, if you aren't already aware, there is a beautiful set of Musela and Skies dice available for purchase from Die Hard Dice, a beautiful sky blue. You can get the numbers either filled in or unfilled. If they're filled in there, that beautiful, yes, there it is, that beautiful uh, gold tone, or you can do it yourself. Uh, and there are also coming up soon or maybe available now, I should look at the site, uh, some Cortex specific sets available so that the dice that you purchase are most useful for a game primed by Cortex like ours. Uh, so a huge thank you to Die Hard Dice. Check out uh, the Musalian Skies set and everything else they have available by going to their website, dieharddice.com. Next up, we of course want to thank Blue Microphones. Oh, you can't see their logo right now. But anyway, this lovely Blue Microphone. Thank you so much to the folks at Blue. Uh, we appreciate them helping us make sure that we sound as good as we possibly can for you all. They have all kinds of fantastic XLR and USB mics for all different uh, needs and price points. You can check out everything they have available at bluemic.com. Uh, and also, we should mention that tonight, one lucky viewer who needs to be here at the end of the episode, so don't enter and run away, uh, will 
will have the opportunity to win either a Yeti X microphone or a Yeti Nano, your choice. Uh, so mods will be letting you know how to and when and how to enter the giveaway. Uh, we do require that the winner is present when we announce the winner uh, in order to collect your prize. So make sure that you stick with us to the bitter end uh, to find out who wins the microphone from Blue Mike. If it isn't you, you can get your own by going to bluemike.com. Third, of course, we want to thank Cortex, the folks over at Cortex by Fandom. Uh, obviously, we uh, wouldn't have much of a game to play if it wasn't for the folks over at Cortex being so wonderfully generous with their time and their knowledge and their system. Uh, if you want to check out the rules of the Cortex Prime system, which are vast and infinitely customizable uh, beyond even what we have done here, you can, of course, get your own copy of that beautiful book that we just displayed for you uh, and, and check it out for yourself. Last but most certainly not least, we of course want to thank our friends over at Twitch for being such a major supporter of our show. Uh, we are here thanks to them, and we greatly appreciate them as well. All right, giveaway announcement. Thank yous to the sponsors. That means it's time for the recap. Who's going to start us off? I don't know why I'm so excited about it this week. I just am. <laughs> Uh, I'll go. I'll go this All time. All right. Do it. All right. So last episode, we were running away from some sort of perceived unknown threat. Um, that was a ship that was like raining down fire upon us. Um, so this ended up us having to move from station to station in a quick manner. Um, <clears throat> we were, I think we were able to take, take out one of the ships or at least return fire successfully at least one time. Uh, so there was multiple ships out there. Um, at some point, uh, we get shuttled uh, to a, the central station, I believe. Um, and we go into a flashback involving Invicta, um, where there's a little scene with uh, Invicta and her mentor. And uh, they kind of go through the process of handing down this very special blade from mentor to student. Um, and uh, a wrapping kind of ceremony, or, or, or at least a, a special moment of just wrapping the hilt from, from one person who owns it to another. Um, and then, let's see, we uh, work together to at least set up some sort of lasers. So Sila uses, uh, Sila 9 uses like a part of her hair to kind of augment the laser system. And we try and hail Bertrand to come and get uh, his Hothrian ship up here as fast as possible so we have something so we can at least move faster or return fire what have you um, once we get back to the central station uh, Bertrand's coming around at that point we have a flashback involving Akimba um, Akimba kind of goes into their backstory of how they became a bio priest uh, they kind of took a spill on a fall someplace uh, seemingly remote um, where they got injured and stranded for a while. Um, this is when their mentor or a teacher, at least, of being a bio priest, uh, sees them and sees that they are somewhat, um, uh, what do you call this? <sighs> Talented is the word I maybe uh, at being a bio priest or analyzing like how to break things down and build them up together. So we see a little bit of that backstory of uh, the excitement of Akimba learning how to become a bio priest. And then uh, we come back to the situation at hand and essentially um, the station is about to get blown up. It's like a whole movie-esque of us running and jumping through pipes on the moon and jumping into the ship so that we can get ready to uh, go from there. That is, that is what happened. I think we've, uh, I think we've told on him before, uh, but every week Michael provides the whole cast with a detailed time stamped set of notes about what happened during the episode. And it's amazing. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty solid. Anybody got anything to add? I did see a hand. Uh, Sala got some, a virus in her software. Oh, right. <laughs> and so there are some, um, random interjections you know like interjections they show excitement or emotion yeah they're generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation point or a comma when the feeling's not as strong 
Uh-huh. All of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Saddle number nine tried to, uh, tried to do something uh, to communicate with these strange alien ships uh, that are causing all of these problems and got a little more than she bargained for. Anybody else have anything to add about what happened last weekend? I think it was interesting because with Invicta, we got to see kind of into her insecurities. Mm. And uh, I know we're doing the recap, but Nortara did a really nice piece about the first time that Roxana heard Invicta say that she was proud of herself. Yeah. yeah. So it was just like, there were feels. I was not ready for feels. <laughs> It's by Seems doing this for nine weeks. <laughs> yeah, truly. Seems to, we, we never expect it, and yet. I love it. Uh, anything else that we're missing? There is. There was, of course, the final moment. So Bertrand was not the only one uh, on the ship that uh, that we said came up to help out uh, to get the the crew off of the moon and to safety. Uh, the station master from uh, Planet Side and also the Grand Minister of Agriculture both insisted upon coming along. Uh, the station master mostly for curiosity's sake, and the Grand Minister because she was determined uh, that this would, in fact, even after everything that the party told her, uh, this would be a diplomatic mission, which makes it all the more, uh, I don't know, frightening, upsetting, suspenseful, who's to say, uh, that when these strange alien ships uh, came across the horizon of the moon and into view from the Wistful Wish, uh, the Grand Minister of Agriculture was the first to react to them by gasping quietly saying no and locking herself in a crew cabin. Uh, so that's how we finished out last week. Um, so I guess maybe we should play on to find out what's going on. How do we feel about that? Absolutely. Okay. Great. I got a thumbs up and an absolutely. Good enough for me. Let's be going on with it. All right. So the four of you are on the Wistful Wish. Everyone except for the Grand Minister of Agriculture is gathered right now in the bridge or on the bridge because that's how that's the preposition we use. Uh, on the bridge. Uh, and you all, the, the Grand Minister has just fled. You can see these two ships that again are these uh, not, well, especially compared to the Wistful Wish, not overly large metallic spheres that are trail, excuse me, that are trailing uh, tentacles behind them. They, the two of them, the two remaining ones, since Invicta blew one of them out of the sky, uh, the two remaining ones have crested the horizon of the moon and are within view and very obviously coming your way. And at the moment, Bertrand and the station master uh, are a little too stunned to do much of anything. What about the four of you? I'm looking at this like, hmm, well, that's not something you see every day. <laughs> you clearly just haven't been out enough in, in Hathoray and space, Invicta. Uh, <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anybody else? What's, uh, what's, I mean, what's the game plan if there is one? I don't know. Standing in stunned silence feels also like a reasonable uh, response. <laughs> I, uh, I like going to go to the navigation uh, table, they're going to get ready to um, at least give some sort of direction or combat maneuvers or something uh, to whoever's going to pilot the ship. I don't know who, but uh, yeah. <laughs> somebody must probably going to be. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kemba sees Ally heading the station. like, that's a, that's a great idea. And he just kind of goes to sit down and just prep for Time to go. Yeah. Expecting time that it's to coming go. soon. All right. Uh, Silent 919, as the uh, ostensible erstwhile captain of the Wistful Wish, uh, what is your response, if any? Planet to planet travel got you down? Call <laughs> Kluber. It's your day to day travel for interplanetary travel. 
really good, really good timing for that uh, that that oh, malware boy. adware to pop up. Really, really good. Uh, Bertrand finally uh, with Eli and and Akemba at least uh, moving to to stations. Uh, Bertrand sort of realizes what is what is happening uh, and and sort of signals and runs off uh, for the engine room, uh, sort of calling back that uh, you know he'll he'll do what we can to to give her. To, to give her the gas. I, that's probably not the phrase he uses because I don't think it's fueled with gas, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he runs uh, He runs back there and uh, I, I still haven't, I, I, um, who's, who's driving? <laughs> that's a good question. It still yeah, is. If no, one, if no one hops on the seat, <laughs> I mean, I will just go hop on the seat. I don't know. Okay. Going. I'll go drive since otherwise I'm just standing there kind of like, huh. That's a thing. All um, right. So I there will go. go drive. Hopefully there's a booster seat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely there is. Excellent. All right. And the, uh, then uh, I lie and, Ike God, I, uh, my name brain has turned off for the day. I lie and Ikemba uh, are strapping in uh, and getting ready for quick travel. And Sila is ad wearing, but also Sila of the, of everyone on board probably will be the most okay if they aren't totally secured when the, when the ship uh, hits speed. Yes, yeah, so are we, uh, are we going, so I turn around, I'm like, are we running away from the ship or are we running to the ship? This was exactly my next question. <laughs> um, I would advise that we at least make some distance between the moon and the planet if we're going to engage or disengage. Uh, we don't want extra collateral damage to happen either to the moon, which we were trying to get water for, or Imagine. the Hotharian planet. Mm. So uh, I'm going to engage our warp drives. Hopefully they'll chase us uh -huh. and, and not have the uh, not have our elephantine friends on the surface uh, deal with fallout from this fight. Yeah, sounds good. All right, so you begin to flee. By the time you you know get everything uh, spooled up and and Bertrand has the engine sort of at capacity, uh, these ships, these two ships, have closed the distance. They're not on top of you, but they're certainly much closer. Uh, so this is gonna be fun. Why don't we head over to the roll screen since we can't oh just narrate this? Oh, yes, no. we can. I mean, we really could. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure it work fantastically. I mean, it is a, we are being more narrative. It's true. Off we go. <laughs> As smooth like or, what? Or, <laughs> I'm sorry. We're all laughing on here because poor Leone just kept trying to switch scenes and we just kept talking. And as you know, we can't talk in the wormhole. There's no air there. So, uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So, Invicta, you are the primary pilot uh, for this, and yes. uh, this is going to be a challenge because you are attempting to do something that these ships are going to actively try to oppose you doing. Before you and I, though, roll those pools, uh, is anyone else, is there anything else that someone wants to do actively to assist in this situation? I know we were sort of, at this point, just trying to get away, but I do want to check, oh no, she's got the smile. <laughs> yes. Um. So I have a special ability of sorts, mm, which is the make it so mm -hmm. that I would mm -hmm. like to use. Which I think you've used once before already, right? We've seen Sila do this. Yes. Yeah. yeah, great. Awesome. Tell and us about it, it again. It helps to assist before Invicta makes her move. Great. And I'm going to try to put it in autopilot, like have Sila be in autopilot, even though she's still out of sorts. Oh, sure. She still made sure that she is in. Yeah, I like that. So uh, where is it? Here we go. Uh, yeah. Ooh, so wait, the... or do, is oh. it the it's a binary universe? You can figure out any problem. Uh, let me read both of these. Uh, it's taken straight. So the make it so you are going to want to activate if and when uh, uh, another station has like you get attacked so after the attack has landed that's when we use make it so uh your uh which one did you say um it's, the, it's a binary using... universe you can figure out any problem everything is made up of ones and zeros activation you're using treat to heal a damage 
Right. So the activation for that one is you are uh, trying to heal someone and using the treat skill uh, for that one. So none of those are going to apply yet. Although, depending on how things go, they may both come into play before we get too far. Oh, dear. We'll put it in the basket. <laughs> we'll put it, that's right. It's there. It's ready. It's, it's we'll at the... put it back it's, on the shelf. It's there, though. It's there. It's, it's there and it's shelf. ready. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Sila is, uh, Sila 919 is already planning to help her crew. Uh, all right, so in that case, uh, I think we can move to uh, putting together Invicta's dice pool and starting this contest. Where oh is my boy. screen? Here we go. All right, Invicta, boy. tell us about, you are, uh, since you are fleeing before they have a chance to uh, do whatever it is they're gonna try and do, uh, you are gonna be the instigator of this challenge. So oh tell boy. us about the dice pool you're putting together to quickly and uh, let's say agilely uh, maneuver away from these ships and from the moon and the planet. Um, definitely putting in my high and old culture because oh boy, I'm gonna need that help. Um, survive because we are, we are doing a tactical retreat. We are not running away, thank you. <laughs> Makes sense to me, yes. <laughs> Um, and knowledge, because I'm putting every bit of engineering knowledge and training into piloting this ship, since everyone else is like, oh, that's bad, we should go. All right, that makes sense to me. Yes, okay, anything else? Um, I can't really use my weapons, and obviously not my, my blade. Yeah. Can I... Because if I step up, survive, it's permanent, right? That is correct. And I, oh, I just have the paper that's got, oh, we should celebrate because one of you has used all of your points and I believe that's a Kemba. So huzzah for a Kemba. Hey. Uh, I, I still had points left. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll double check, I, it may not have been you. I'll have to look. Um, if that's the case, then I'm going to step up, survive to a D8. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you still have, oh, you've got plenty of points. You got five points left. Uh, oh, wait, so I do work. Hold on, there. Hold on. I love it. Word, I do. Word. So I just used three points. I have two left. All right, here's okay. this roll. Let's see what you have to beat. Oh, I. Oh, uh, what? Huh? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You have to beat a you. fifteen. It has been a week. Ooh, that is a roll. Okay. So maneuvering well, and let's see what we can do here to put together. Let's get together, yeah, yeah. And no hitches on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, here we go. I was like, I know I put these together before. Here we go. Okay, so this is to keep up with you fairly well. And okay. that means this is a maneuver thing for them. So this is their pool. Now, oh, well, that wasn't great for that one. Uh, so the, oh, the ships, I do have a hitch. So uh, first of all, let's say, uh, Invicta, do you have any uh, any stress at the moment? Um, I think, um, I think, I think we got through all of our stress last week. I thought we did for you as well. So yeah. I just wanted to check. So that is uh, that is one use of the hitch for you, but you don't need that. Uh, so the other thing that you can do, uh, oh, uh, if there is an asset that you have, uh, which for you, I guess, hmm. Isn't gonna really apply here. No, it's not really gonna apply here. The other thing you can do, uh, which I don't think I've mentioned too often because it often doesn't, but I should say it out loud. Uh, the other thing you can do with my hitches, uh, which uh, to put a positive spin on it for you all, it was called, called opportunities. Uh, the other thing you can do is spend a plot point to step up uh, the die for an asset that you have that will be relevant for the rest of the scene. But I, your asset yeah. is your blades. And I, uh, at least for the moment, that doesn't seem relevant. Yeah, I'm going to keep that in my pocket. And if you allow it as a storyteller, I would keep that in my pocket for e for any of the crew or Captain Sila 919 because their assets will probably be more relevant to this fight. That That is totally fair. And actually, I want to check something out because I I was reading this the other day and I think I might have a little bit lied to you all for nine weeks. Uh, what? <laughs> no. Well, uh, yeah. So it turns out 
that when I opportunity, uh, actually, I think any of you can choose to spend a plot point to uh, either step up a an asset or step down a stress. Uh, I'm gonna say, and I should get clarification on this, but I'm gonna say that just one person can, but it doesn't have to be the person that I'm rolling with. So if anyone wants to uh, use that opportunity since Invicta doesn't need to, get a little in the weeds on the rules here, but I realized I was doing something wrong for nine weeks, so eh. Yeah, because my uh, my opportunity is not gonna be applicable for this. And and you rolled so well, and they didn't. So like you're sort of in a good spot at yeah. the moment. Uh, yeah. Okay. So in that case, uh, if no one else needs it for the moment, then we are going to resolve this test, uh, this contest, I should say, uh, which means that you are able to engage uh, the engines, Bertrand's kind of uh, helping you along here. And uh, you manage to get a good distance away from these ships. You sort of punch it so suddenly and quickly uh, that the Wistful Wish, large though she is, uh, goes shooting off away from the moon and from the planet of Hathare and from these two ships. And you manage to back off quickly enough that you all have some time again. Uh, you have a few, maybe even minutes. I mean, you know, Bertrand <laughs> really gave it to the engines. So you've got some time. I will say your success in this contest buys you all some time to, to plan or make any sort of preparations that you want to make before these ships catch back up to you. Which of course they inevitably eventually will, but you've done good Invicta for the moment. See, it's always concerning when the storyteller is like, for the moment you're okay. <laughs> well, I will say the fact that you won in that contest uh, and your effect die was larger than mine means that uh, somebody on the other side has taken some stress. So you you also did, you, you did real good. Yay. I got to figure out how that applies, but you all talk amongst yourselves while I do. I did a thing. You did. Oh, great. Oh, Phoenix well. says I'm right about the opportunity <laughs> thing. I um, hardly really ever remember to look at chat, but this time I did and there it was. So I'm so glad. Yeah. A uh, quick thing since it popped up in chat, even though this isn't a charity stream, uh, the auto command is still on for a charity thing I did. So we're not pushing it, but it's there. And if you have money, you should help people in Chicago eat because it's cold yeah. and it's winter and COVID. Oh yeah. Uh, all right, so plans, preparations, a moment of breather. What are you all doing? I would like to make a navigation course, a, a kind of... Um, it's a word for it uh i don't know what the word for it anyway um i'm trying to make a navigation course that is going to make us weave in and out of the asteroids because i figured if, if if the hothrain planet is constantly getting bombarded by asteroids mm -hmm. there's like obstacles that we'd have to dodge but it would also maybe open up a targeting window for Akimba so that it's easier for him to fire on these ships chasing us because it might like funnel them. So I'm trying oh. to essentially like plot out uh, some points that Invicta, I know that Invicta would successfully be able to navigate so that we can kind of evade and maybe return some fire back. I love that. All right, you start, uh, that is an, an unopposed thing that you wanna do. So it's gonna be a test, which means I will roll a difficulty uh, and then you will roll after me. But go ahead and start putting together that pool while mm -hmm. I check in with the rest of the crew and see if there's anything they wanna be doing here. Gotcha. So pool, light bringer. I'm using more of the sense of, um, I guess, is it active or passively trying to protect the Hotharayan planet? Um, so like, Basically, I'm looking at this as my opportunity to, although I'm not healing them through the water, by giving them water, uh, we're making sure they're not in danger. Oh, um, I like that, yeah. I'm going to do fly because my knowledge of flying might help me set some navigation points that I know that Invicta might be able to hit. Definitely. Um, and then we're going to use... I never like to beef up everything. I kind of like to let one kind of be like, eh. So um, I'm going to do exploration here because I'm not that familiar with, this is a kind of off the fly, sure. uh, forgive the pun, uh, way to kind <laughs> <Never>. of, right, <laughs> to, to navigate <laughs> through all this, the, the asteroid debris. So that is what I'm going to do. 
All right, I love that. Uh, I will, we will roll that up in just a moment, but I do want to check in with Silent 919 and Ikemba to see if there's anything uh, that they want to do in preparation in this moment as well. Ikemba's just watching behind us to make sure nobody's messing with him. He's just yep. ready, like just waiting. Love it. Keep an eye. And also what, what Eli is doing for you is, is going to help you when the battle that it feels more and more inevitable uh, finally arrives. So Akemba is ready and waiting. Captain? Sila has a moment where the malware isn't working, like is not overpowering her to the point that it was. And she is going to reach behind her ear and she's going to press this very, very small button behind her ear, and she's going to do a hard reset. <laughs> what? I always get both. She's going to turn it off and on again. Uh, mm -hmm. I always get both terrified and really excited when Silas starts uh, pushing and prodding and pulling things out of her head and hair. I can, I am always excited to see what it is next. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Hard reset. So is the, I, I presume that the goal here is to clear away some of this corruption. Yes. Yes. All right. I love that. So, uh, then what you are going to do is with this hard reset, you are also going to put together a, uh, dice pool and you are going this because there is a, uh, there is a mechanic for reducing stress uh, within a scene. So I'm going to roll two D8s. That'll be your difficulty. Uh, I'll tell you that now because it's standard. Uh, and you will put together a dice pool to roll against that to make this hard reset clear out some of that, uh, some of that corruption stress that you've currently got. Hmm. Oh, I'm so torn between Montsgane and Biopriest because I feel like with the Biopriest oh. and the numbers and the code, mm -hmm. it would be a really great thing. But also with using her Montsgane culture, she's used to doing these types of hard resets. It's something that's happened before. I'm going to do that. Okay. I think that's great. I'm in the wrong screen again. Here we go. All right. So we'll do a D8. And then, for the months again, I mean, for the uh, what do we go with Biopriest? Yeah, uh, doesn't really matter. No, either way. with Montagene, uh, with Montagene. Sorry, yes, 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 that's what we went with. Yeah, 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 it does matter. These things are important to me. Sorry, you're right, it absolutely matters. So, I'm gonna go with fix because I am trying to get my systems right, absolutely, yes. And I am going to use duty because I am trying to get myself together to do my duty. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Looks good to me. Okay, let's go ahead and anything else in your pool, Silent 919? Mm. All right, let me roll this one up. Oh, yeah. So I, oh, no, I rolled a 10. Uh, no hitches on either side, uh, but the hard reset uh, sort of stutters you, but unfortunately does not uh, does not clear out any of the virus, uh, the malware at this time. Uh, so when Sila nine one nine comes back online from the hard reset, what uh, tell tell us about that? Is your microphone giving you trouble? Get a blue microphone. They come in so handy for all your interplanetary communication needs. I love it. All right, so uh, Captain Silo 919 is giving us a uh, an advertisement for blue microphones. I lie. Uh, let's see how you do. So this is gonna be a moderate difficulty and let's see what we roll up. That is an 11. Go ahead and roll your pool against me, I lie. <laughs> Oh, uh, yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> All righty then. So uh, I'm going to buy those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Um, this, is, this is my trademark. This is like my. Truly. 
It's the whole thing. Truly. Uh, so I lie, uh, go ahead and take a plot point and okay. I am going to need you to add uh, I will let you tell me what you think is more ally, whether uh, his in whether their inability to uh, find a decent path through the asteroid field uh, would make them more afraid uh, of the situation or more insecure about their capabilities. Um, let's go with afraid, not so much insecure. I think what's going okay. on with them is that they do see that uh, Sila nine one nine is having a rough go, and he uh, they they know that uh, they know that the whole team works better when we're all we're all functioning and, and firing on all cylinders. they that's their whole gig is they yeah. work well in teams, they work well in community, and when one person's out and they can't really help or contribute to that because um, this is not. The way they know how to help people is through more of a medicine route than building people up or breaking things down. So they're they're kind of they're a little afraid of what it means that at least one team member, um, and especially Sila nine one nine, is down because they're they're really uh, integral in in making sure that um, things get done. So yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. So that'll be a D eight of afraid. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, all right. So unfortunately, uh, there isn't a, a, a helpful path through the asteroid field, uh, and Sila919 has not quite cleared the adware from her system, uh, but Akemba is still at the ready. Invicta, was there anything that you wanted to do, uh, before the ships catch up to you in this moment? Invicta. Um, not yet. I did. I well, I shouldn't say that. I wanted to <laughs> talk to our our culture minister to find out why you ran off and are like, oh God, it's them. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. You've certainly got some time to go head over to the uh, to the crew cabin where <laughs> where she has locked herself. Uh, and as you get over there, uh, you can hear on the other side of this door. Uh, you can hear that she is talking. Uh, but all that you can hear is one side of what sounds like a conversation. It's tough to make out what she's saying, uh, but you can tell that she is is having a conversation with uh, someone. Um. I'm going to knock first. Uh, yeah, the so you you knock and there's sort of a, a an obvious pause. She pauses in the middle of of uh, her conversation, uh, but then after a few moments, she just picks picks back up where she was and doesn't respond to the knock. Okay. Um, can I just open the door if she doesn't respond? It's locked from the inside, so you Ooh. could um, you could try and get it open somehow. Bertrand almost certainly has, you know, the ability to to unlock doors from from the outside as well. It being his ship, uh, but you would need to go down to the the engine room to to get that from him. Also, who started driving when I left? I, well, that's a great question. I sort of assumed that you'd made it to a safe and somewhat okay. defensible spot and sort of left it, you know, idle, okay. as it were. <laughs> sure. Deep space <laughs> autopilot idling, Deep, sure. That's right. Deep space hover. I love it. <laughs> um, I'm going to knock one more time before I try to go get Bartran. Uh, so you knock and there is sort of an exasperated sort of like a sort of like one of Bertrand Bertrand's excited trumpets but not quite not now comes from the other side of the door all right then I was trying to be helpful so uh <laughs> whatever is going on and you can't share with the people that ran away with you remember that when you want us to help and I just walk away <laughs> 
who knows whether that uh, that got through to her, uh, but she uh, she certainly didn't seem any more calm than she was when she first ran off. Uh, all right, so uh, Bertrand has been uh, hard at work in the engine room as well. I'm gonna do a quick little set of tosses for him uh, to see if he can maybe create a little, oof, create a little asset for you all. Mm. Can I get like a digital like skeleton key? Uh, oh, <laughs> that uh, that wasn't what I was thinking, but he if you want to go talk to him about that, he certainly could. But at the moment, while you're over there checking out the uh, checking out the grand the grand uh, 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 help me grand uh, minister. <laughs> yes, I was trying to combine minister and agriculture into one large word. Uh, while you're over there trying to deal with that, uh, Bertrand is sort of stoking the metaphorical fires of the engines. Uh, and uh, I had him do a test against a, a base roll and he succeeded. So the next time uh, any any of you want to, or for the rest of this scene, uh, the, if any of you would like to uh, maneuver the ship or pilot the ship in some way, uh, you can, if you so choose, uh, you can have a D8 asset that is uh, that we will call uh, souped up engines uh, that any of you can uh, make use of. Bertrand has also, just like all of you, has plot points at his disposal and spent a couple of them to create this asset and make it available to all of you. Yes, Eli. I'll, I'll take the helm if everyone's kind of preoccupied at the moment. Sure, 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 sure. So uh, as Invicta returns to uh, the bridge and as Eli is sort of checking and seeing what's going on and maybe moving over to the pilot seat, uh, the two ships, uh, again, a little ways in the distance still, but they become now visible uh, through, the, uh, through the view screen of the Wistful Wish and uh, are very obvious on the ship's sensor array as well. And they are approaching. Oh boy. They are going to, they get, uh, well, apparently within range of something. Uh, so we are going to head over to, another, well, we're going to say where we are here on the screen, but we're going to head to another, uh, another contest set of dice rolls. But this one is initiated by these creatures and their ships. So is Eli or Invicta piloting at this point here? I think what's going to happen is if, like, I don't know if, if we're getting any some sort of sensor signals of like they're trying to lock on or engage us, but if that's going to happen, um, Eli's going to look at Invicta um, and they're going to say, um, if we're about to go into some sort of engagement, I think you and Akimba might be good on combat to, to maybe take these, um, these um, elements out. All right, guns, got it. Um, and I'll hop in the pilot seat uh, to make sure that uh, we're fully loaded as far as the weapons front and so that they can focus on that and I might be able to pilot. Okay, uh, so we've got our two <coughs> tactical stations filled again. The two guns for the Wistful Wish are, are, uh, are ready uh, and operated. Uh, Captain Silent 919, your, uh, your hard reset didn't mechanically reduce your corrupted stress, but it did sort of uh, slow down the, the torrent of, uh, the torrent of adware. So you are functional. Uh, is there anything that we should know about that you would like to do at this moment uh, before we start this contest? Is it possible to? Ooh. Oh. Sorry, I'm having a moment between like, what? Ooh. <laughs> I can't wait Sorry. now. I lie. Yes. Where could I best be of service? Um, I think it'd be best if, um, you take the helm again. I, I, I'll probably, um, be back on navigation. If you're back at it, I think it'd be best for us and the crew if you got back in the pilot seat. Yes, I'm fine, fine, fine. Okay. 
All right, so Captain Silent 919 will be taking over the pilot seat, which means Eli, you're heading back to the sensor array? Yeah. Great. All right. Okay. So, Silent 919, the first contest then is with you. Uh, remember that uh, as the uh, in the captain's station, uh, you can, if you would like, as part of this, uh, as part of this contest, if you would like, the ship's computer does give you an optional D6 in addition to anything else that you want to add to your pool. Uh, but let me tell you what they are doing. So these ships are locking on with some sort of weapons and are going to be firing upon you. They are attempting to... Mm, maybe I don't want to... I probably should, like, the way this rolls, but I'll... I'm not gonna tell you what they're trying to specifically do with these attacks, because it'll be more exciting if we find out later, uh, but they are trying to attack your ship. So when you're building your dice pool to uh, roll against mine, uh, that is that is what they're trying to do to you and what you're, well, I assume trying to avoid. Don't let me make any decisions for you. Invicta. Yes. What is the status of your weapons? Ready to fire. Thank you. You're welcome. Ila. Yes. Are we within a good distance to actually make impact with an attack? Yes, we're in perfect distance. They're about to engage with us, so we can engage with them. Invicta? Yes. Fire. Ooh, that was ooh. all you had to say. Okay. All right, now we got a couple of things. Uh, we got a couple of things going on here. Uh, and there are there are several ways that we could resolve it. So we could, uh, if you all, well, I guess Captain Silent 919, the first question is yours. Uh, as your two uh, tactical stations, uh, as Invicta and presumably Akemba as well, uh, engage these alien ships, are you trying to pilot the ship sort of evasively, or are you going to let your tactical stations just handle this battle? Um, I'm going to be prepared for evasive maneuvers. Great. But I want to go ahead and make the attack and then pilot the ship out of the way. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right. Excellent. So in that case... It's kind let's... of strike before they strike. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. In that case, let's have uh, Ikemba and Invicta. Let's have the two of you start putting together uh, tactical station attack dice pools. Uh, for the two of you, remember that if you choose to use uh, the uh, the ship's missiles, uh, which are slightly less uh, uh, slightly less powerful, but uh, do a bit more. Uh, or sorry, slightly less accurate, but do a bit more damage. You can add a D6 to your uh, to your dice pool. If you want to use the ship's lasers, which are more accurate but pack less of a punch, you can add a D8 to your pool. Entirely up to you all what weapons you want to use, uh, but both okay. sets of weapons are available to both of you. Okay, just a note that it did not keep my step up from last round. Oh, okay. All right, so feel free to, uh, yeah, you'll, re you'll remember that and uh, we shall we shall account for it because that was indeed permanent. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm just trying to remember my step up. I think uh, it was from last week or from the, earlier today. Earlier today uh, was survival, I believe. Okay, or survive. So then okay, I didn't step up. No, I know I stepped up my high and old distinction. Um, uh, and I'm upping my knowledge since I still had two. I still had two points left. I am just looking at the wrong. Here we go. I was like, you are saying all these things, and I see nothing because I'm on the wrong screen. Got it. Okay, great. There's that. Uh, all right. And Ikemba, what do we got for you? And we're starting with Musalian because he's yeah. in space. He knows what he knows what he's doing. Survival or survive because this is a tough situation that we may not. Like the potential exists for us to not really. Have a Do good not. time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> knowledge because he's done a lot of space travel. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Good value for it. And adding in the D8. Okay. For if it'll let me add the D8. Oh, wait. Maybe like that. Lasers. For lasers. It is. And then. All right. And I. Oh, go ahead. Uh, 
he doesn't necessarily want to like destroy the ship, but he does want to take it out, like, okay. like stop it from attacking. So he's going to use uh, target systems talent. Great. I love that. So uh, this one, just to read it out, the activation is you are in a scene involving a fight or a battle. I think this counts. Uh, you spend a plot point and you get to step up the stress twice to one aspect of the enemy vessel. So if you manage to uh, succeed in this contest, you will greatly step up how much damage you do and you'll sort of be able to target a specific uh, portion of the ship. So you could target their engines uh, to get them from, from you know coming towards you. You could target one of their weapon systems systems, that sort of thing. I love that. That makes sense. Uh, Invicta, I see you've added a D6, which tells me that you are using the slightly oomphier missiles, yes? Yes. All right. I love it. Uh, let me, let's see. I guess since there are two of you at two different tactical stations, we're going to do two separate but concurrent contests. Mm. Uh, are you two, now here's, a, here's an interesting question. Are you two firing uh, at the same ship or at different ships? Hmm. Same ship. Yep. Okay, Same so ship. I will, got it. All right, uh, so let's start with Invicta. Uh, these ships are instigating this contest. So uh, they are gonna roll first and they are going to roll. Invicta, you don't have any stress, right? Uh, no. All right, well, in that case. Here and I still have my roll. opportunity from earlier. Goo, goo, goo. So they got a 16. Ooh, can I use a plot point to, well, depending on my role? Uh, yes, so uh, go ahead and make your role because there's a few other things that we can do with plot points that haven't come up yet, but might depending on how this role goes. Yes. Oh, ho, ho, but we don't need it. Look at that, it's so pretty. Look at that 18, not a hitch in sight either. All right, so let me, I gotta write this down because you're, if, okay, so you won the, con oh, ooh, do they wanna press their luck? Because remember, this is a contest. They can choose to continue going back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and knowing what I know about these, um, let's say aliens, uh, I, I, I don't think they would give in. Oh, really? I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> But that was so one here, shot fired. That's right. Here comes here comes the next shots forward. Oh no! All right. Sounds Another like opportunity. Should anyone wish to spend the oh. plot point to reduce stress? Uh I yeah. lie. You want to buy that one? All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spend you that plot point. <laughs> Step down that afraid stress. Yeah. I love it. Invicta, you are yes. using the tactical missiles. Uh -huh. uh, and you have succeeded here. Now, oh, yes. uh, their effect <laughs> die, oof, their effect die is a D10 and yours is a D8. So what happens is since you won, uh, the your effect die is going to inform how much uh, stress or whatever this ship takes. Uh, because okay. theirs is higher, the level of stress that they take is your effect die minus one. So they're gonna take a D6 of stress except you used the tactical missiles, which automatically, based on, based on the stats that we have for the uh, Wistful Wish, automatically step that up one step just because they pack more of a punch. So we're back to a D8 of stress, which just absolutely obliterates this one of the ships entirely. Uh, so Akemba, you will have an opportunity to fire at the other one uh, since the first Ooh. the first shots out uh, just obliterated that first ship. Now, Akemba, I know you said you wanted to not destroy, but disable, yeah? Yes. All right. I want, I want people to question or- I wasn't trying to blow to it up. <laughs> no, 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 there's no knocking the blowing it up sometimes. I mean, you, you only need one, you know, hostage to ask questions of. You live by the missile, you die by the missile. So be That's it. That's it. That's it. All right. So they're going to roll first because, again, this ship is instigating the uh, the attack in this scene. So their first roll for this contest is a, oh, not great, is a 10 and another hitch. Man, I'm rolling like fire tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyone want to buy me... that? Oh. Say what? Anyone want to buy that hitch before that opportunity before we have a Kemba roll? For Kemba. Kemba. Oh yeah, uh, uh, Silent M19, you wanna buy that one? All right, spend you that gone. plot point. Yeah, spend you that plot point and step down that corrupted stress. What level was the corrupted stress at before? Was it at a six or an eight? I 
want to. I want to say it was a six. I want to say it was a six as well. I was thinking it was a six. Okay. Yeah. Unless you discover otherwise, Silent Nine One Nine, let's say that we are stepping it down from a D six. So you're spending your plot point, uh, and you are at a D four now. As uh, if we recall, it's been a while since we had a D four stress. Uh, the way that D four stresses get cleared from you is the next time you make a roll that uh, that might include uh, be hindered by the fact that you are corrupted. You will add that D four to your dice pool. Uh, and roll it, and then once that pool is done, then the stress gets removed. The reason for that is because uh, a D4, remember, has a has a twenty five percent chance of hitching, right? So it's you you sort of don't want to voluntarily add D4s in unless you're doing it like to buy a plot point or something. Uh, D4s are risky dice. Uh, so silent nine one nine. The next time you get a pool, you will add a D4 to it, and then that corrupted stress will be cleared from your system. However, for now. We are still in this uh, back and forth with uh, with Kemba and the remaining ship. Uh, so Kemba, do me a favor and go ahead and roll your pool. The number to beat is 10. I'm so nervous. Is it is it going? See it all, there it is. is. There we go. I was gonna say, I see okay. things happening. I, I see him. All right. So there is a 13, but there is also a hitch. I am 100% buying that hitch from you. So take mm. a plot point uh, and you will take, let's see, why don't you, uh, why don't you take a D6 of, and again, I will give you the choice here of, uh, of afraid or angry. Akembo, which do you, angry? Yep, absolutely. Quickly. Uh, yeah. Take that, take that D6 of angry stress. Uh, and uh, like I said, they're not, they're not giving in. So they are gonna roll again. Uh, they're gonna press their luck and they are now going to use that angry stress uh, against you, Ikemba, and add that to their pool, which was maybe a mistake because I seem to be rolling a lot of itches today. Uh, oh boy. Speaking. Okay, well, there's another one, although it wasn't on the D6, uh, and an 11 is not gonna beat you. So, uh, if you, <laughs> Ikemba, if you would like to take that plot point that I just gave you and spend it to step your uh, angry stress back down to a D4, you are welcome to. Done. All right, so there goes that. They failed at this test. Your effect dice are equal, uh, which means that they will take a D6 of uh, stress. Do you have a plot point remaining to do what you wanted to do, which was the target systems? I think you do. That was, I was actually using the one that I had to target their systems. Oh, I see, I got it. Okay, great. So, ba -ba 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 -ba, I've lost target systems. Okay, so we're stepping that D6 up to a D6. 10 stress, which, uh, what are you targeting weapon systems or engines? Engines. All right. Uh, so you fire and just completely disable uh, this ship's engines. Uh, let me mark this here. Hello. Okay, uh, so they are, the engines to this ship are cut off completely. There is still a bit of, uh, you know, uh, some, some, real world physics still apply. So there's still uh, some momentum, some inertia. So the ship is still coming in your direction, but they no longer have any control over it uh, and, uh, and are still sort of uh, hanging out, not looking too great. Uh, so that round went quite well. Let's check in uh, with all of you and see what your plans are. Uh, you have a moment as this ship sort of careens and is spinning, still heading towards you, uh, but clearly out of control. Ooh, um, I have a question either for Sila or for Bartrand. Uh, yeah, ask and we'll see who wants to respond. <laughs> uh, does the ship have either tractor beams or a way to tow that ship now that it's disabled? Uh, it does. Uh, tractor beams a bit fancy for the Wistful Wish, but it does have a uh, basically like a harpoon sort of thing uh, that you can use to well, something tells me that Bertrand didn't design it to be used uh, to haul in enemy ships whose engines have been disabled, but doesn't mean you can't use it for that. <laughs> Fair. Uh, so yes, there uh, that ship does the ship does have that capability. Bertrand tells you. Hmm. Akemba. Yes. What do you think about harpooning our our new buddies over there and uh, 
towing them somewhere they can't cause any harm. That seems like a fantastic idea. I support this. But I don't want to get too far from the planet just in case things go bad, because if we, if things go bad and we get either shot or our engines disabled, because their weapons probably still work, I don't want to be just out in deep space with no way to get back to the moon. Touche. So, but, but I'm all for harpooning them through their useless engines and towing them somewhere at least so they can't get away. Yes, let's. I would love to ask okay. them a couple of questions. <laughs> I and I want to see. I imagine you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Eli and Captain Silo 919, anything from y'all? Oh. <laughs> oh. I love it. Captain Silo, what's up? I'd like to attempt some communication. Oh, yeah. With the, with the ship. I keep almost saying the name and catching myself because I don't want to spoil it. Uh, not that the name would mean anything to anyone, but uh, yeah, to, with the, with the uh, alien ship. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You can transmit whatever you want. We'll see what you get back, but transmit away. Would you like to surrender now? Um, <laughs> I think you get back. Uh, so there is, there is, as with pretty much every time you've attempted communication to these ships, there's nothing for a moment. And then over the comm system, again, no video comes up, but over the comm system, you just hear this sound, a sort of, this is going to be really gross. A sort of wet, uh, splorchy, like huffing sound. Uh, and in some deeply twisted universe, this might be laughter. Hmm? Was that a fart? <laughs> what? Thanks so much for hanging out, folks. That's it for this week. <laughs> it, it was nice to see you all. Goodbye. <laughs> we can't. Neither can I, apparently. Whew, okay. <clears throat> I'm sweating. Look at me. Doesn't have a scarf on indoors, but anyway. Um, <laughs> it whew, it I sounded love it. like a fart to me. Uh, well. <laughs> Sorry. I worry about you. I do as well. Dude. Love you. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Sila919, any response to the sound? It's a simple question. Are you going to surrender? Yes or, or, or no? Uh, and the communication from the other ship cuts off, uh, but you see that uh, the, the, <laughs> the tentacles off the back of the ship, you can all see, uh, have begun to sort of, uh, well, they are no longer sort of flailing wildly. Uh, it looks like they are sort of kind of stabilizing the ship from its wild spin a little bit. It doesn't seem like they're gonna be able to really like propel the ship or do any sort of like fine tuned, fine, finely tuned maneuvering. But the, the tentacles, several of them have sort of spread out and are rotating in such a way that it seems to be a little bit slowing the spin of the ships. Uh, so so Sila, I, Sila 919, I think that is perhaps your answer. Does the Kimba see this on comms on like on his... Oh, for sure. Yeah, because you're still in your tactical station, yeah? Yes. Yeah, then absolutely, yeah. Uh, Captain, Silo 919. Yes. Uh, I would venture to bet, I'm not a betting man, but I would wager that they're trying to stabilize and prepare for another attack. Attack them. Uh, as did your command. Captain. All right. Make it Wait. so. Well, shit. It's 
Instead of making souls, because they got to go now. Captain's order. I, mean, I mean, you could do both. You could attack their weapon systems and still I mean, uh, yeah, in. but like, I, that's what I was intending to do. Okay. I was just saying the captain said do a thing and shoot, so I'm just preparing my shot is all. Dude. That's right. All right. I love it. I love it. Uh, great. So uh, now let's, uh, there's only the one uh, reeling harpoon. So if we are using that, uh, which of you is is making that shot and which of you is going to be following uh, Captain Silent919's direct orders to attack the ship? Uh, well, she, I'm she gonna... told me to attack, so I figured that was right. That's true. Okay, great. Yeah, and I'm going to wait and see what the result of Ikemba's okay. shot is. Okay. And then... Uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, just neither one of us should throw away our shot. Right, absolutely. Uh, the wait. harpoon system is actually all the way in the in the uh, uh, the aft of the ship, uh, back sort of near, actually near the uh, big cargo bay door that uh, that Bertrand opened up for you all to get in on the moon. Uh, so, Kemba, you can, or sorry, Invicta, you can start heading to the rear of the ship to to get that ready, assuming that Ikemba's shot goes well. Okay, I was hoping I could like just sit there and watch and see what happens, but okay. Oh, well, you can do that too if you want, uh, but do know that the harpoon's on the other end of the ship. Oh, all right. I, I, I'm getting, I can like listen on comms to see what happens, but I'm like, I want to see, I like, I want to see the shot. <laughs> well, there will be, so you'll have some sort of a viewfinder at the harpoon because you'll need it to yeah. make that shot. So you will sort of be able to see. Okay. Just maybe not quite the, the front row seat that your tactical station provides. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, so everyone is is getting ready and preparing. Uh, I, Lila, I want to check in with you real quick. Uh, what's going on at your station at the moment? I'm going to uh, go from the navigation systems to the sensor stations to see okay. if these are the last two combative ships that are out there or if there's more of these things out there. Um, because oh, we don't sure. know. These, we, we took down one, there's two of them. And then I just want to maybe run a, the same type, type of scan that we were able to figure that they're out there. I want to run one, see if I can direct it over the moon and over the planet. I don't know how far away we are, but if we can, if, if uh, I can do that, and that's something I'm interested in doing just to make sure that these are the last ones that we can sense at the moment. And we mm -hmm. don't have to um, get chaotic and have to, take these out in quick succession and, and have to like race back over to the, the planet. Love that. Yeah, absolutely. So you, uh, you start a scan uh, and, you know, try and take in as much space as possible around. And it's a, it's, you know, you know that these ships, the ones that the ones that are engaged with you all now, you know that they have cloaking capabilities. Yeah. So it is, you know, you really sort of have to to dive into these sensors and look for what isn't there and all of that kind of stuff. And it becomes almost, um, I don't know, like uh, like a meditation, the focus that you have on this. Uh, and I, I think Eli is very, uh, very capable of, oops, sorry. Uh, very capable of sort of uh, checking out these sensors, having a look around, really focusing in, uh, but also sort of uh, allowing their, my, their, their focused mind uh, to wander a little bit. And as you continue to expand the reach of the sensors and search for uh, more of these ships, uh, you start to remember. And let's, let's pop over a second so we can talk about what you remember. So, Eli, this is not the first time that you have found yourself sort of in the middle of conflict between, uh, between two peoples. Uh, we know that Eli has spent some time working for uh, sort of a paramilitary rescue organization. Uh, but, but even before that, uh, you had experience sort of uh, mediating, although I'm not sure that's what I'd call what we're doing now, uh, but being the go between uh, between two peoples. You want to tell us a little bit about about that? Yeah. Um, so the community that Eli was from, they they had to settle a dispute between their community and another community, um, and at one point. Uh, a certain crop that we had was failing 
and we were having trouble accessing that resource and it was a very important resource for our community and on the other hand um the other community that's kind of a neighboring one they're they're still probably about a quarter or half a day out walking distance um and most of the people over there do generally walk or have some sort of service animal or some sort of um animal that kind of like shuttles things back and forth. They are also um, lacking in some sort of resource or um, some sort of crop. And Eli had to be the, the medi mediator between the two. Uh, they were, both of the communities didn't really get along very well because they, they seemed to share like a source of water. They, they shared a source of um, like rich, there's a, a rich deposit of um, soil and mm they kind of do cycle and rotations of grabbing that soil, placing old soil back at that place to get enriched. And it's just like something that um, they seem to get in each other's way. Just it, everything started as like a small squabble, just little mm -hmm. here and there it wasn't a, a very big deal, but then as it just festered and people kind of sat and focused in it, it became like a, a, a conflicting point between communities, nothing that like brought them to, to arms, but something that was just like, Oh, they're here again or, whatever. Yeah. Vitoa, Earth, wherever we are, resources and riches, always the source of the conflict if you dig deep enough. Uh, so yeah, uh, exactly all of that. And and Eli being the uh, level-headed, uh, you know, empathic individual that they are, uh, how did, how did uh, you know, sort of on the whole, the TLDR, but how did the mediation go? Um. It was interesting at first. Um, this is probably around the time where Eli was was still learning, uh, picking things up as they were going. This is like the 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 uh, what do you call that exponential learning phase mm. of the mm -hmm. Misogize life cycle or journey, where they're probably maybe at the tail end, like seventy percent of the way through. I don't know what that looks like, but yeah. uh, they knew at an emotional from an emotional standpoint that they really cared about both communities. Um, and they knew that, um, they might not have all the, the savvy, like they might not have all the words or the, the politics to kind of mm. speak into it, but they knew that they had to do something. They needed to step up. So that's having to be able to know that, Hey, we're not the only community that exists. They also do exist. Having to speak to elders, having to speak mm -hmm. to community leaders, having to speak speak to um the people who run supply or the the farmers that kind of oversee things um yeah. it was kind of a a worrying moment for them and i think it's worth pointing out that this is all happening and and, and you are doing all of this uh you know in the grand scheme of things not very long after for all intents and purposes you were born created, yes. whatever, right? Uh, yeah. You have uh, re in the relatively recent past, not days or anything like that, but in the relatively recent past, uh, you completed the the ritual and the procedure to become Nisajai. Uh, so this is all a lot, uh, but Eli, <laughs> as uh, the Eli that we know uh, may have still been learning back then, but was still the same person ultimately. And they, uh, you know, comported themselves uh, with a plum and uh, were able to to broker a, uh, well, anyway, who can really say, but what seems to be a, a pretty solid and lasting uh, uh, peace and agreement between these peoples. And so uh, it is it is sort of after all of that has happened. Uh, the agreements have been made, peace has been found, things are beginning to settle down. Uh, and we see then, we, we are back on Vatoa and we, uh, we dive down into this uh, village set sort of on the edge of one of the Vatoan forests. And um, we find Eli and Eli, you have completed, uh, you know, the big, the big request, the big job here. Uh, what's what's going on in Eli's mind? What's next? What's their? What are their plans? What's happening here? Yeah, um, I think their plans uh, were to. They heard about this like um, pararescue or or some sort of. Those are one of the one of the uh, things they were interested in. The other thing that they are interested in was uh, they did. Um, briefly hear about Torch that they had mm. 
some ways to um, go out on humanitarian efforts to go help um, mostly on this planet to just go out to like rural areas and mm -hmm. and be able to uh, provide some sort of expertise or, or, or help and they knew that their village was was good was good to go and they they wanted to seek uh, another another um, place to help out in a bigger pond uh, as yeah. as you will and I think at that point the the village that they're at they probably have like a some sort of uh, technology hub like although we're in a village and stuff they still get technology but it's oh, kind yeah. of a smaller space or a, a, a building that's kind of like medium size that everyone kind of goes to if they need something to get done and i guess i'm just in there um just scrolling through looking at things to get prepared to head out of the village uh equipment i might need um other organizations or um whatever have you they're just kind of doing their research knowing that they mm -hmm they'd like to leave the village at some point to go help out in the bigger world. Yeah, I love that. Um, while you are in there, uh, you hear behind you, you hear someone approaching behind you uh, and you turn and you see the, uh, the, the elder of your village uh, has come in and it is this, um, <laughs> this, wizened, wizened old person uh, stooped with this long gray hair, but they, uh, the minute you look in their eyes, you can see that though, they're, though their body may show the signs of age, their mind is sharp as ever, these crystal blue eyes, unnaturally blue eyes almost, uh, that, uh, that watch you there at the console doing your research, knowing, have you mentioned to anyone that you're planning on going by at this point? Yeah, I, I've probably yeah. mentioned it to um, maybe about two, two to five people, but as being a village, gossip is a thing. So <laughs> yeah, even absolutely. though you try and have like a small little like, um, I don't want to say click, but like a small little intimate group that you're a part of, like someone let something slip or like someone's over at someone's house eating food or they get invited over and like it just generally gets talked about. So like nothing really ever is like a, a secret in, in the village. Right, absolutely. Uh, so the uh, the elder uh, sort of steps forward as you as you turn around and see them, uh, and just smiles, and says, um, "It has been such a true joy watching you work, I like." Um. Oh, you know, yeah, you're here. Um, and I'm gonna do like a, like a gesture of respect that we do. I'm gonna take their hands, and usually their hands are kind of like this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna grab them by their wrists and kind of lightly put it on my cheeks. It's just like mm. this is our sign of respect between people who are younger and uh, the folks who are older. Um, and quickly do that gesture and then say, um, I I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I'm just doing the best I can and, and what feels right. Uh, ever since the ceremony, I've just been trying to find my center, find my balance and, and things that drive me. And this seems to be one of the things It's just helping wherever I can and, and helping people come to agreements and terms and, and things that benefit not just their communities, but all of them. Um. This gesture of respect uh, is one of the um, origins of it, right? Is acknowledging the Misajai markings that appear uh, coming from the new Misajai's eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the elder sort of uh, does their part of the gesture, which is to trace those lines down gently uh, and remove, then remove their hands. And they nod as you, as you talk about all of this uh, and say, um, doing what feels right, your instincts for one so young, truly remarkable. And I know that you will do great things, I lie, and if it were in it, if it were in me to be selfish, I would insist you stay and 
continue to help us grow and flourish and uh, commune with all around us, but I know that you intend to leave and I know that that is best. What, what is that that you're looking at there? Oh, um, oh, these are just various, um, I guess like traveling implements uh, on here. It says that uh, it's, it's a backpack of sorts, but it looks like they, it's a sort of rucksack, uh, just various things like that. They sort of uh, bustle forward and like not shove you, but like move you aside a little bit so that they can see the, uh, the console and they look at it and it wouldn't, wouldn't last a cycle. Not at all. Shoddy, shoddy. No, no, we can, we can do much better. Oh. When were you thinking of leaving? Have we time? I think so. I, I, I have about, I think three weeks before I step out. I, I don't, it seems like lots of these opportunities are gonna line up in about three weeks as far as being able to be in one place in the city. So ah. I, I probably have about three weeks before I, I head out of here just to uh, get in that window of, of, of opportunity. Plenty of time, absolutely plenty of time. You don't worry about a thing. The absolute least we can do is assist you in the next phase of your growth and perhaps give you a bit of something to remember us by as well. Don't you worry about a thing. We'll, we'll find something for you. Oh, um, I appreciate that so much. Um, uh, I... I... This is going to be great. Uh, I, I'll have something to remember uh, this place, and uh, I, I'll, I'll return. Uh, it's just something in my soul speaks out that I just need to go out there and, and wander around and see what fits me. Yes, yes, yes. You don't have to defend yourself to me, I lie. Now get out of here. We'll take care of it. You go out. Enjoy the beautiful day. Oh, okay. Uh... That sounds, that sounds great. That sounds well. Um, as I pick up to go, um, I'm going to grab kind of like my time card uh, <laughs> just to track. Like people have time cards in this like little digital hub. So like I'm just going to grab it and uh, give it to the person who's at the uh, little counter. Great. And then I will head out. Um, I probably at this point just have a staff, not like a whole sphere. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm just going to take that from where people leave like umbrellas or whatever they have. <laughs> Great. Uh, and I'm just going to grab that and head out um, into the day. Great. And, and, and you do, and it is just another day, a beautiful day, uh, you know, lovely weather. Uh, and, and so pass uh, the, the following weeks, uh, you know, just because the elder has, has promised you uh, some supplies for your journey doesn't mean that there aren't other preparations to be made. Uh, and so, you know, you do that. And, and like you said, small village uh, secrets are non-existent. It isn't long before basically everyone knows uh, that you are leaving. And so on top of the preparations, there are goodbyes, there are thank yous, there are uh, small, you know, small celebrations uh, thrown by, you know, individuals uh, who know you particularly well, uh, and and so pass you know the next three weeks in sort of really just uh, lovely sort of memory making goodbyes. And uh, I lie at this oh, yeah. point. I lie at this point is very full. Like they have not been able to to have a break where they weren't like eating <laughs> or invited to someone's house where yes. they're just like, you know, you're about to head off this big trip. You need your calories. Like they they've they've had their fill. <laughs> of food almost too much, um, but they're, they're happy. Um, and so it is with that full belly and full heart uh, that the whole village then does gather uh, for your farewell. Uh, and the elder and, and a couple of other, other individuals that you know are um, particularly skillful sort of craftspeople and, and uh, uh, seamstresses uh, come forward, excuse me, tailors, uh, come forward and present you uh, with a really, honestly, kind of 
extra rucksack. Uh, it is beautifully made uh, and is, uh, is, you can see in the, in the strap stitching uh, are the signatures of those who crafted the bag. Uh, and on the other end of the strap is the name of the town elder. Uh, it, has, it has pockets and pouches and, and you know, areas and all kinds of things for anything that you could ever need and there are some supplies that have been that have been laid in it maybe not everything you could ever want but you know they've definitely <laughs> put some food uh and you know a, a nice uh a knife and and some other some other things in there and it is uh presented to you at, in a ceremony in which the elder uh names you uh friend of the village uh which you know, to outsiders sort of may seem like a somewhat trivial, uh, somewhat trivial title, but friend for your people is, uh, is a, is a statement, right? You help anyone who needs it, uh, because that is what you feel drawn to do, but to truly get to a place where you call someone friend is a, is a moment. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think on the little, uh, on the rucksack, there's probably a pocket on there that has stitched on there something from the previous that that's that's connected to Eli previously before the 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 uh, ceremony before the ritual happened. Yeah. Um, and it's not that something they're super attached to. It's just like a nice little memento. It it's not something that they're they're overly like defensive or strong feeling about. It's just like a nice little accent that's on that fits the pack and one of the. I would think one of the tailors couldn't help themselves but to just put that little part there. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So they uh, they hand it to you uh, and present it to you and and name you friend of the village. Uh, and you know the uh, the elder sort of embraces you formally as part of the end of this ceremony and just whispers to you. You will always be welcome here, Eli. Um, thank you so much. And I'll do the gesture again. Um, I promise I'll return and um, see to it that the, the village continues to grow. Um, hopefully I can mean as much to the village as you have throughout your, your time. Um, and you're gonna see uh, Eli's eyes uh, well up with like the the purple like um, oh, clear yeah. clear fluid, um, and they're just gonna like keep dabbing their eyes and and um, look to everyone out in the village and just see people who who remind them of of one specific memory or the other, mm -hmm. and um, some people they. Eli's always been sassy, but like <laughs> there's some people they don't quite enjoy, but they still like at that moment just show at least a, a sign of respect, even though it's like a mutual like, uh. yeah. um, and yeah. uh, they just take that time to do that. And they they put their ruck, they put their rucksack on and let the weight of it really like take a hold, like just feel the it almost feels like they have the their village on their back, but in the same sense, mm. it, it's it's the weight of adventure. It's the weight of what's to come. Yeah, and it I gives them that. some sort of comfort, just like how you would sleep with a, a weighted blanket or a pillow. Oh, yes. And uh, yeah, they they take yeah. one look back from the village, and um, in their in their mind, they had this one place where the village stops, right? Like where the mm -hmm. village is no longer the village, and the rest of it is just like open road. Uh, they take a little time there. There's not much other people there. They take a little mm -hmm. time just standing there, um, probably look at a far off hill or feature, and then they take their one first step forward and, and yeah. keep walking until they hit the city. And as they walk, uh, the, the camera in our minds sort of zooms in on, uh, on the rucksack that is uh, functional, but also deeply symbolic for Eli. Uh, and it, it zooms in and we see the form of this. And as it zooms back, uh, we very briefly get a glimpse of a somewhat more recent memory. And we see as we zoom back, that rucksack is no longer on Eli's shoulders, but is in fact on the seat of the pod 
uh, and we watch as Eli slams the button down in a hurry to send that pod as a distraction off to the other side of the moon uh, with that rucksack in it as the pod uh, sails away. And that is where we're going to take our break uh, for this evening's session. We will be back shortly to see what happens with the one remaining alien ship. Uh, but we had a chance to see a bit more about Eli's past in that little flashback. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. Thank you, Michael. That was a blast. I really enjoyed that. And all the rest of you, thank you for hanging out. The cast is going to take a little break, get a bio, get some water, get whatever we need. And you all should do the same stretch. We are all human. We have needs. Uh, and we'll be back uh, shortly. In the meantime, enjoy this week's fan art presentation on the Be Right Back screen. Uh, and we will see you all shortly. Thanks for hanging out. Y'all don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. Hope you got yourselves hydrated and stretched and all of the things. Uh, very happy to be back with you all. Thank you for hanging out. What a first half, a flashback, a space battle, all of the things. Uh, and it feels like maybe we should hop back into said space battle. Uh, and so here we are. So uh, when we left uh, the crew on board the Wistful Wish, uh, two of the three uh, identified uh, alien ships had been taken care of. Eli was sitting down and they were sort of in that deep focus mode, uh, checking the the sensor array for anomalies that would indicate more of these cloaked alien ships. Uh, and so they're working on that. E Kemba is ready at the tactical station, having been given an order from Captain Sila 919 to fire upon the remaining alien ship. Uh, and Invicta has moved to the aft portion of the ship towards the cargo bay doors. Uh, to ready herself at a, uh, for lack of a more nuanced term, a basically a harpoon uh, that she may use, depending on how Akemba does, she may use to uh, reel in the uh, alien ship, maybe for questioning. Who knows? Uh, let's find out now. So, <clears throat> That's where the four of us are, and I believe, uh, based on the conversation that we had before, uh, I believe the first thing that's going to pop off is a Kemba uh, firing at the uh, this remaining ship as instructed. So a Kemba, we're going to put together uh, another uh, contest dice pool. You're initiating it this time since they're you know spinning out. Uh, but tell me first of all, uh, what are you using again? The the lasers to target a specific system? Are you using the missiles to just blow the dang thing out of the sky? What's the plan here with this attack? Well, while it might be nice to blow it out of the sky, we did suggest that we wanted to like question them. And if we use the missiles, that is very unlikely. So, uh, D8 for the lasers. Okay. Uh, same, same dice pool as previous. Musalian, he's flown a lot, he wants to survive, and he knows his way around a ship. So Absolutely. he's prepared to do work. That all looks good to me. I'm just checking to make sure that I don't have anything that you can add. Uh, Bertrand did that thing, but that was for maneuvering, not for attacking. So yeah, uh, that's good. And since you are initiating, you roll up first. Ooh, a hitch, but a really good roll, sir. <laughs> a really nice result there. Uh, so I'm just wondering I will... why the dice have forsaken me right now, because that hitch I... is a problem. And it I is a little of bit of a problem. Well, I'm going to give you a plot point, but I am also going to give you back that angry stress uh, that we have been so back trading back and forth. The, that's a D6, yeah. The way that you and I have been going, uh, I'm going to roll an opportunity and you're just going to buy it back down. So it's going to be fine. <laughs> uh, all right. So this one is, ah, now. The ship has been disabled the engines have been disabled so that needs to come down to a d4 for their dice pool which means that the rest of this actually that's going to be two d nope i was right the first time one d4 and this okay let's see how we go not very well they have an ability that I could use to increase that total, but even using that ability, I would not be able to match uh, a 17. So, uh, Ikemba, um, there are, I think you have had the opportunity to, uh, to sort of examine these ships. Obviously you had to have identified their weapon systems uh, in such a way uh, that you could target them. Uh, and so I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to give you a choice. There are sort of two very obvious uh, weapon systems on that are part of this ship. One of them are the lasers that uh, they use to take out the uh, lasers down planet side and that they have been firing at mm -hmm. you all. You do also notice there is sort of another... Um, uh, there's a, a, a laser sort of that you've noticed as it as the ship started spinning and the tentacles started flailing, uh, sort of where, this is a horrifying comparison, but sort of if this was a squid, it would be where the mouth, where the beak of the squid is, is another laser uh, that hasn't been used at all in this fight, but you have identified that it is there. Uh, so which uh, which weapon system do you want to disable with this yes. uh, contest? 
Yes, is the answer to that question. I wanted to disable uh-huh. both of them. <laughs> yes, but, <well>. um, <laughs> I would love for you to disable both of them. Yeah. Uh, but since we have tied our effect dice, uh, which means that uh, they're gonna, well, I'm gonna step down the effect on them. We're only gonna be able to disable one of them right now. Hurts a little bit. I'm just trying to, to uh, in my head, I'm imagining that the the beak of a squid would be like the last resort. Uh huh. I'm gonna do some work, kind of powerful weapon to be like to be saved until you get to the last situation. I was like, oh, this is last ditch effort. So uh-huh. part of me wants to take that thing out immediately, but the other way, there's lasers have been firing upon us pretty thoroughly. So like, I'm concerned. I kind of lean over and like say to Invicta of Invicta, I see a secondary laser that I could also fire upon him. Which should I take out? Which do you think poses the greater threat? Because we're on comms now since I'm walking to the harpoon. Every one of them. The problem I'm having is that I (laughs) am slightly out of my uh, my normal. And I don't want to make rash decisions that could hurt everyone. So I'm inquiring to someone else who is the blade. So either way, I believe I'm taking one of the one of the lasers out. I'm just curious as to which should be the problem because I fear that the second laser is the more damaging, but we've been being fired upon by the other. Take out the beak, but and I'll be ready to to spear the other laser that's been firing on us or right above it. Indeed. Done. He just like immediately okay. shuts it down and then hits fire. All right. So you shut it down. Right. I mean, ju- you know, very, <laughs> very, uh, the, you know, womp rat sized target in the center of the Death Star, <laughs> uh, just right down the middle of this thing and uh, disables that, that central uh, beak laser or whatever it is. Uh, all right. So Invicta, uh, I believe that means we are up to you uh, with the harpoon. Uh-huh. And it sounds like your plan was to go for that other laser, uh, which yes. is absolutely fine. Uh, so let's hear about your dice pool. Um, this is actually pretty intense. So instead of high and all, I'm going with intense. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay, great. Um, and I'm using my last point, even though this isn't saving it, to step up in tens to a D10. So basically all of my distinctions should be a D10 once we're done. Um, I'm gonna go with fix because I'm not going to destroy it. And do I get an extra die for oh. the harpoon? Yes, the harpoon has a D6 rating. Okay, so this is going to be a, a it's going to be <laughs> a lot of high dice. Let's see okay. what happens. All righty, I like it. I like it. Um, no botch, no botch, no botch, no whammies. whammies Let us and here we go. Ooh, y'all are rolling tonight. I mean, okay, uh, let's see. This one we're gonna do, now it is disabled, so we gotta do that. And then we gotta do this one, and we gotta do this one, and we gotta do this, nope. And we gotta do, oh, if only there was a D12, we'd have all of the dice. All right, uh, okay, <laughs> let's see how it goes. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Oh, uh, no, uh, hold on. Nope, nope, I can't do it, okay. Oh boy, uh, and you so, have, and, you and have. I have an opportunity. So if anyone would like to buy down, uh, if anyone has a plot point and would like to buy down their stress, let me know. I mean, yeah, I want to lower stress, but I also oh. I also didn't want to be a dude who's like, give me the thing. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> the way I'm rolling. There will be more I would, opportunities, but I, would I will very take much it. like to. Oh, well. <laughs> I said, I will take it if you don't well, want Well, hold to. on. Before you take it, can I use that for Sila and this malware problem? Ooh, or that. That's a great question. So Sila's malware problem is at a D4. So that's going to hang oh. out until she uses it in a pool. Okay. Yeah. I tried. You did. 
<laughs> all right, I lie, it's all yours. All right. Uh, all right. So go from D6 to D4 and afraid. Now. Yep. And afraid, and that'll get added to the next pool that it's relevant in on your end again. Oh, I'm gonna uh, roll that one. Clear. It's me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, and don't forget, I still have an opportunity from before that I have not used. That's just right, in my right, pocket. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now, let's see. What was your effect die? Okay, so good news, bad news. Great news, obviously you succeeded, you have harpooned the thing, uh, and now all you need to do is activate the winch and it'll pull the, pull the ship closer to you. Um, your effect die and my effect die were both D10. Oh, D10 down deep never mind yep you get the uh the ship's weapons uh and are able to disable that laser so as you wheel as you reel it in uh with the with the the harpoon's winch uh you know that at least as far as you all can tell uh the weapon systems all of the weapon systems on that ship have been disabled uh you can see that the uh the the spin of the ship sort of arrests somewhat abruptly uh, as the harpoon sinks into, uh, you know, through that final laser and into a portion of the, the hull of the ship. And, and do you begin to winch it towards the ship or are you just gonna tow it from afar? Uh, bef- I'm not bringing that thing close in so they could just jump on our ship. <laughs> but I do ask uh, Ikemba, Ila, and Captain, si- Captain Sila 919, for a scan confirming their weapons are disabled. So uh, I lie, at yep. the moment, I wanted to head to you because we do still need to resolve your uh, your look into the universe uh, for the other, for any other ships. Uh, yes. So do we, have a, do we have a dice pool for you? Uh, no, for not that? yet. Mm-hmm. All right, let's do that first and then we can address Invicta's question. Okay, um, I'm gonna do... We're all community because I'm looking out for the Hotharaeans and their source of water. Yep, love uh, that. And I am going to do <clears throat> focus because we're trying to focus in on net. And then I'm probably going to use duty here because I feel like it's always like my job to make sure communities are safe. Uh, if I wanted to roll, the, put that D4 somewhere, is this where I do it? Yeah, so you're gonna to toss that in here, uh, and then okay. it will clear from your from your stress rating. So you'll be you'll be good. Will it, it though? In here. Well, will it though? Not if you're all the one. <laughs> I mean, no one's life is really on the old well, people's lives are on the line, but not directly. So I'm gonna put the D4 here. <laughs> yeah, do it, do it, do it. Okay, this is a uh, test. Well, hmm, interesting. Is it a test or is it a contest? I'm gonna say actually that it is a contest because mm-hmm. if indeed there is something out there, it would be actively opposing you. Yes. Um, I'm, not, I'm not committing to an answer one way or another yet, but that's the, the mechanic that we're gonna be going along with. So you're initiating this, so you will roll first, set the first difficulty level. <sighs> I'm gonna roll, I'm not gonna look because it's just gonna, it's just me. Oh, look at you without any ones. Oh my gosh, this is a... Hi. So good. Yo, Rio, so I'm so proud. Uh, All right, so ten, not bad, not bad. Yeah. Uh, here we go. You can, uh huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. and what do they have? Let's do this. That's the tech. The tech is I can't look at my rolls. Right. Yeah. That's it. That's it. All right. Let's see what we got. We have a fifteen okay. uh, to to oppose you. So this is a contest. Uh, so you can choose whether you would like to press your luck and continue rolling, no, uh, that or ain't if you me. want to. <laughs> that a me. I love it. Okay. So in that case, since you have chosen to step out of the to step out and lose this contest, you get a plot point. Uh, and you get a hand in narrating uh, how this doesn't go your way rather than me just really laying it on in the storytelling. <laughs> okay. Um, how this doesn't go my way is um, during that flashback, I was thinking about my pack. Like it just the brief like moment mm. in, in combat, um, just like those little tiny moments that you get of respite you know, when you have a thought and you're not, you're in immediate danger, but like your mind escapes you for a second. And so I think about my pack. I'm like, dang, I need to go get that thing. (laughs) 
<laughs> and I I like press one number wrong to do initiate the scan to to get the signatures of of all those type of um, uh, vessels out there. So I, I mm -hmm. press one thing wrong. I don't notice it. It's kind of just like a slip, and uh, I I think that there's nothing out there. Like I wasn't able to ascertain that there were more than the ones that we're engaging with currently, as far as the other maybe cloaked uh, ships out there. Great. Okay. Uh, so all of that happens. And uh, <laughs> I do feel bad about this. So the D4 clears, uh, but I did win a contest uh, and it looks like our effect die match at D8s. Mm. Uh, so unfortunately uh, we'll step the D8 down one from D8 to D6, but that means that you now again have a D6 of afraid or, or, or I don't know, afraid or insecure since now we're talking about the pack. I don't know which feels more right to you, uh, uh, but a D6 we'll of one of those stresses. Let's just keep adding it on to different things. Let's just yeah. let's just go. Uh, so insecure because I don't have the weight of my pack, the comfiness of it. I, I know it's that. not around. So great. Um, we're great. just gonna distribute that and uh, mm -hmm. we'll go. But there. you can clear the afraid, the D four of afraid. So that's okay. Not there cool, anymore. cool, cool. Yeah. Cool. So we're just hopping around. All right. So uh, you don't you don't notice any other holes in space. This does in fact look like the last one. It really your focus was. Uh, was a lot and took something out of you, but you know you can report back. So now we flash back to the exact uh, present moment and Invicta has asked something. Oh, if the weapon systems have in fact been disabled like they think. Okay, I will check that. I'll make these uh, things quick. Uh, Lightbringer. Uh, oh, just you be... don't, this one doesn't. I it's not me. Remember, no. The remember, no. when we do roll dice, there is always the potential for you to get stress. Uh, so it has to be a really significant moment. And I'm going to say that you can just check the sensors uh, okay. and determine that, in fact, this ship has, uh, 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 has no more uh, weapons capabilities uh, with which to fire you upon from, the, uh, fire upon you from the ship. Uh, uh, so you Invicta, it, it's seemingly that uh, the weapons are disabled. Uh, your efforts, the, the fire with you and Akimba uh, were successful. Excellent. Indeed. Thank you, Eli. Um, so random, and this is out of character, is there a way to secure this thing or is it going to like zip as soon as I like am done and walk away from the winch? Uh, you mean like, is the ship going to try to escape? No, no, like the harpoon and the, I guess the rope or whatever is. Yeah, the, like cable. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, what about it? It's not going to like try to auto retract or anything. Right? Oh, no, 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 no. You would have to, you would have to actively, you know, give the, give the command, press the button, whatever it is to, to winch it in. So it'll stay, uh, it'll stay basically exactly where it is. Uh, you know, you can, you can tow the ship. Yeah, wherever okay. you went, whatever you want from this safe distance. Okay. Um, Captain Silent 919. Yes, Invicta. What are your orders or what are your suggestions on what to do with our enemy ship? Are the commute are the comms still working, Ally? Yes, they they're they're operational. I'd like to call back over to the ship and say, are you still laughing or would you like to have a conversation? Would you uh, want? <laughs> there is, uh, I think there is a uh, pointed silence on the line. So they don't respond. Uh, and now you know they can. Uh, so in response to your question about whether or not they're still laughing, the answer does at least seem to be no. Uh, though having a conversation uh, may not be what they're gonna opt for, at least at this moment. You can tell us if there are others with you. You can, what, what did I say last time? Surrender? <laughs> or we can just finish the job. Um, you receive, there's, you know, that sort of very tense moment, right? And you receive, uh, a, a, 
what a signal, a sort of communication. It isn't it isn't verbal, but you receive sort of a a code that indicates surrender. I believe we're going to continue to pull this ship. I don't think it'll serve us anything to bring them inside. Oh no, we're not we're not bringing them on our ship. But we should be cautious because we don't know how many are on their ship. I I like Ikemba's suggestion of interrogation, but we would be walking into the lion's den, so to speak, if we go to their ship. So you want us to blow it up? I want at least one of whatever's over there to interrogate, or rather have Akemba interrogate them. Well, even if we interrogate them, there's no guarantee that we'll get any information, so we could always just blow them up. Um, feel we might, at minimum, be able to get what their goals were. But what's the point of lying about your goals? Not everyone will admit their goals, even yeah. when interrogated. But if we do blow them up, there may be more that come, but these ones won't come again. Is there a way to teleport just one to our ship if we could isolate it? A life signature? think the wistful wish, because remember, Hathoreans don't have the most up-to-date tech, so I don't think they have sort of that sort of fine-tuned uh, teleport technology aboard here. Uh, but if it makes you feel better, Invicta, uh, Eli, you are there at your sensor array while this conversation is going, uh, you know, continuing to, to, you know these cloaking devices are tricky, you're continuing to just sort of scan. You notice something approaching the ship on your sensors uh, and it's close. And so while the rest of the crew is having this conversation, you have a moment to glance uh, at the, to sort of reorient the view screen towards the rear of the ship. And this ship that has been harpooned, the tentacles are basically like scrabbling hand over or tentacle over tentacle using the harpoon's cable to manually pull itself closer to your ship towards the rear of your ship and it is it is like this great sort of all of these things just one over another very um what are those things from it's like uh, the nebuchadnezzar in the matrix like those little that's like... exactly it that's exactly what I was going to say. Those things in the Matrix, it is exactly that. And it is coming for the ship. All right. Oh and only Eli sees that? Yeah. Only Eli has it. noticed it in this I'm, moment. I'm about but... to report it, though. <laughs> um, crew, the, the ship that you disabled seems to be latching onto the wire that it's currently dragged with and trying to make its way aggressively into our ship. Mm. Mm. That is easier than it's aggressively coming to us. The captain's plan seems pretty spot on. I believe we should be aggressive in kind. Indeed. I, I don't even begin to know what that means. What are your orders, Captain? I've been on board. Blow the thing to hell. <laughs> and, and done. Okay, then. <laughs> So oh god. The camera goes to his guns and just like, well. Yep. Captain's orders. Absolutely. Oh, there shit. it is. Oh shit. All right. Uh all right, Akemba. Let's uh you toss together, I assume, uh this time missiles, yeah, because we're well, I guess you could uh, use lasers if you want. I mean, I don't think lasers are gonna blow a thing up as much as we kind of want it blown up right now. So Well, and the way I've been rolling tonight. The difference between a D6 and a D8 for you ain't gonna matter much. Also, the way I've been rolling tonight, so it's <laughs> well, that's fair. The two of either. us together, just botch after botch. Let's make it happen. So, like, uh, <laughs> same roles: Musalian, survival, knowledge of space, and missiles. Uh, sounds good to me. I am on the wrong screen, but you're not. So here we go. All right. Let me know when I'm rolling. 
Uh, this is a contest that you are initiating because they are going to oppose your blowing them up. So you roll first. Go ahead whenever you are ready. Done. Damn it. Oh, no. It hasn't popped up on me yet. Ah, the suspense. Has it popped up on here? No, not yet. Okay, there we go. Ooh, all right. Eight mm. and a hitch. Uh, I'm going to buy it, and I'm going to step up that angry stress to a D8, which I will then add to my pool. Um, can I no can I throw at Kemba the plot point I've been keeping in my pocket that I bought off you earlier for an opportunity? Uh, the plot point. Oh, you mean my opportunity from earlier? Um, yes, because I have not used it. I've kept it in my pocket. You can. Mm, good question. I think. I think since we're in the middle of a contest, I think you'll have to wait until after the contest finishes out. Okay. Um, no, that's fair. I just was like, please, yeah, less anger. To totally, totally, totally. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Now I gotta uh, make sure I do this right. That is not correct. Um, <laughs> I got excited Oops. and just threw a bunch of dice in and none of them are the right ones. All right, here we go. We're maneuvering. So we need three of those and one of these and one of these. Okay, there we go. Let's see, no whammies and all that. Uh, well, we got a whammy, uh, but that is okay. So uh, Kemba, if you want to pass me back that plot point, you can step your uh, stress down now during the contest uh, back to a D6 if you would like. Yay. I All think right. it was already a D6, so it might just be going back down to D4. Well, it, remember, it was at I D6, just. Then we went down to D4, then we went back oh, up to a D6. Right. Okay, great. So step that down to a D4. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, Done. But my total is 11. So up to you if you want to press it or if you want to uh, gracefully bow out of this contest. Now I'm pressing that. All right. I'm pissed. Like he's, he is, he's still only slightly angry, but he's still angry. Absolutely. So same pool for you. Roll it up. Oh, and add that D4 in this time, though. So I have to add clears. the D4. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. And done. All right. Uh, let's see. What am I? God damn it! Uh oh. How oh, no? How it takes. It always for some reason, and it doesn't happen on all of you, but yours takes a minute to get to me. Okay, but you beat my you beat my target, which was right. Was eleven, right? It was, yeah, it was eleven. Yeah. Okay. So you beat my target. Uh, but <laughs> well. Uh, let hey let's just trade these back and forth i will give you another plot point and i will give you a that cleared your stress but i'm gonna give it back to you so i'm gonna give you a d6 of angry damn it all right okay that means i do get to use this little d6 how many plot points do i have at this point because we've been like giving them and taking them like now well that's the thing is almost every time i've given you one you have then i have then rolled an opportunity and you've paid it back so so I think you're probably at however many you had when we started tonight. Okay, so that'd be one. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I've not I'm been keeping track. It's like, yeah, you get, you got that, and then give it back though. And it right. Like, <laughs> but like, I'm gonna need that though. Appreciate you. Like, it's in here. I love it. Uh, okay, here we go. Including that D6 of angry. Oh, it's a 13, and I rolled another hitch. So would you like to? <laughs> would you like to step that angry down again? Yeah. All right. Always. <laughs> All right, so the angry's at a D4. This is a 13. We are back and forth. Do you want to press your luck? Of course. All right, do the thing. Uh, you're going to include that D4 again since it's back down to a D4. And then... um, Whew. Since I have a plot point, mm -hmm. I have a, uh, a talent called I Have You Now due to being oh. tactical. Tell me all about it. Its activation is when you are in a scene involving a fight or battle and use tactical missiles. Uh huh. And if I succeed in the test or contest using tactical missiles, a step up your effect die. Yeah. yeah. All so, right. So uh, if you, if and when, I will be, will be optimistic about it. Uh, you win this contest, you will, you will really blow them out of the sky. <laughs> I love remove, it. I'm just gonna remove that plot point then. Like, do I do it now or after? Uh, no, actually, that uh, that talent doesn't cost you a plot point. That's just oh, a thing perfect. that you get when you use the missiles. If you have to spend one, it'll specifically say spend a PP. Perfect. Plot, plot point, you children. Okay. Okay. So, say, like, 
same you, pool and to, like end the roll in the yeah you got to end that start one. the new yep. roll start the new one you will include so, that d4 this, angry that we keep giving you this this is intense <laughs> y'all 13 is the number again. to beat yep there it is Okay, he seems happy. I don't see the numbers yet, but oh, I see a Damn 10 it. on my end. <laughs> but hey, no hitches. I just saw a lot of fives and I was like, all right, cool. I'm down with fives. Okay, so here's what happens. So Ikemba is firing the, uh, the ship's missiles and they uh, just this, now that this ship has uh, a, a method of locomotion uh, sort of, you know, primitive as it is, uh, it is just sort of rolling and spinning along this harpoon cable as it moves and every missile just sails right by it as it sort of drops. Uh, what was that? That was I, it just death dropped apparently. Uh, as it drops and spins and bobs and weaves and just manages to dodge these missiles as it's coming, as it's coming, as the as the uh, as the ship arrives at the cargo bay doors of the Wistful Wish, it slams into them. And Akemba, your effect dies uh, dice tied, uh, but uh, so that means we'll step down the effect. But from the jostling of this ship, you just are so. Frustrated, uh, so that D four of angry angry clears, and I'm gonna give it back to you at a D eight level uh, <laughs> since you lost this combat uh, or this contest rather. Um, so D eight of anger, despite all of that really focused effort, this ship has now arrived here uh, at the cargo bay doors, and you all can hear that these tentacles are scrabbling at the cargo bay door, trying to find purchase and probably gain entry to the ship somehow. Captain Silent Nine One Nine, what's let's check in with you first. What is going on? Well, I was hoping for at least some form of a splatter by this point. As was I, Captain. Uh, none of my missiles hit it. it. It dodged every one of them, and it's now at the cargo bay door. Invicta? Yes. Anything? Well, I'm back at my station now, so I could take a shot. I remember I was trying to just disable it, which we did, but now there's space things coming at us. <laughs> I couldn't keep it straight. It was face. perfect. So it was perfect. No, no, it was perfect. I was like, this is going to go in a bad place. It's going to get this channel bounced. <laughs> I've watched well, too like much anime mm -hmm. in my younger days. Mm. What was that, Sil Captain Silo 919? Well, let's say we get it out of our face and into space. <laughs> Once we're through this, we're working on your jokes. That was so at this moment, uh, hearing that command over the comms, uh, finally bursting forth from uh, the crew cabin that they had been that she had been locked in, the uh, the Grand Minister of Agriculture comes trumpeting out of the cabin uh, and yells, "No, you cannot! You must not destroy them." I'm sorry, what? You must not, and she is in Captain Silent 919's face. You must not. You can move yourself back a few feet if you'd like. Uh, surprising to probably many of you, uh, if Bertrand were here, he would absolutely plot. Uh, she does not back down. She sort of puffs herself up even bigger and says, I am the Grand Minister of Agriculture of Hathoray, and I command you not to destroy those ships. You will not. Uh, Eli's going to see this happening because they're right there as well. They're going to step not so much in front completely of Silent 919, but like off to the side, but still in front of 
this uh, person's grill, um, essentially, and they're going to say, just imagining a giant elephant with a grill. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I love um, they're going to say, listen, right now, Silent 919 is the captain, and you're just a passenger on the ship. What is going to happen right now is that we're going to finish what we're engaging with, and we can have words with you later, but you are not the one giving orders right now. And I'm just going to stare at uh, this person like sternly, and I'm not going to move. Um, despite them puffing up their chest, I am. I'm just meeting them uh, in kind with this, with the same like um, attitude and forcefulness that they are trying to display or puff up. Where I'm not, I'm not trying to puff up. I'm just essentially just. Um, taking a stand and being in the center of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Captain Silo 919, <laughs> I imagine, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, I imagine that it has been some time since anyone uh, was quite so um, forceful toward you. Is that a fair assessment of the situation? I think the only adequate way to respond is in the traditional Monsagene uh -oh. way mm -hmm. of from Sila's from Sila's home, of course, which is to look at the Grand Minister over Ali's shoulder and say, "Keep that same energy. I don't know who you think you're talking to." <laughs> yes excellent so as you do this sila you you uh you take the confidence that you have always had and the knowledge that you have you know one way or another have installed yourself as captain of this ship and that means something and and you assert yourself and in that way that machines, that computers can have multiple processes going on at one time, Captain Silent 919 is fully present here, facing off uh, through Eli uh, with the Grand Minister of Agriculture. And Silent 919 is also back, remembering when she was uh, the last, perhaps the last time she was truly admonished in such a forceful way. So let's move over and have a little trip down memory lane again, shall we? <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> It's a big worm. Oh, okay. It's a big wormhole. We had to get through. So look, Sila's memory is a complex place. We had to go through a couple of paths. Anyway, we made it, we made it there. Sila nine one nine. You as you uh, you are in two places at once. You are there on the ship facing off with the Grand Minister, and you're back. Many well, years ago. Let's say I won't say how many many's. Uh, years ago, you are young. Uh, by any standards, definitely by Monsagene standards. Uh, and, and you are remembering a time that you were admonished. Uh, set the scene before this moment a little bit. What has just happened to Sila? Where is she, uh, generally speaking, and, and what's going on? How old is she? Tell us about the, set the setting. So Sila has been programmed for about five years at this point. Mm -hmm. And She's still in school with the other Monsagene learning how to, like, this is where they get their specialization. She's, this is where she's going to learn to be a bio priest. And she's just gotten her feelings receptors. Mm. And so it's, it's a lot to process, but she goes to the area where they, like the recess area. And she sits down next to another Monsagene and says, hey. He says, hello. I'm Sila 919. It's a pleasure to meet you. 
Jero426, a pleasure to meet you. Would you like a sandwich? And she pulls out this little bag that has a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in it that's cut in half. And she reaches out and offers her piece of her sandwich. And Jero426 sort of looks down at it and cocks his head a little bit and says, please explain the function of this. I've heard that it's what's called a comfort food. Sort of tilts his head to the other side. Please explain comfort food. People that require sustenance have these when they are needing to feel comforted, I've been told. It makes them feel a sense of home. Hmm. And uh, Jero426 uh, takes the sandwich and just sort of holds it and says, gratitude expressed, just holds it. Have you heard of friends? Friends. Searching. And you can tell that Jero426 is, is uh, processing something and says, yes, friends. Other sentient races form attachments, feelings, emotional bonds with others that they enjoy. Oh, we've lost your sound. I've been told that possibly with feelings receptors, we could have an idea of what this feels like. You have feelings receptors? I am scheduled for mine next week. Tell me, can you describe it? It's as if everything has a function but some of them are terrible. Sometimes my eyes leak oil when I don't feel happy or what happy is supposed to be. Joyful, there's lots of words and they connect to a feeling, but I can't, I'm still learning to process them. From a ways off, uh, in this sort of recess area, you hear the voice of one of your uh, one of your teachers, one of your mentors, uh, call out Sila nine one nine, and you see uh, you see her come sort of very quickly moving towards the two of you. This feeling is what I think is commonly referred to as terrified. Is that a good feeling? Says Jero four two six. I don't believe so. Then why do you have it? I, I don't know. Uh, as you are sort of uh, floundering and trying to explain the reason for a negative feeling, uh, the, uh, the mentor, the teacher arrives at the two of you and once again says, Sila 919. What are you doing? I was discussing my feelings. This is my friend. The, and, and this mentor just looks, clearly she has uh, feelings receptors because she looks shocked. And she just uh, says, she sort of, uh, uh, she, doesn't, she doesn't grab you, but she indicates that you should stand. Uh, without touching you and says, absolutely not. Why do I have feelings receptors if you don't want me? Not to all Mansagene are meant to feel. You may have received the receptors, but you have not. You have not calibrated them, nor have you been given permission to use the full suite of them. Friends, no. you want me to be the most adept, then why not let me explore this? 
you will be allowed and given permission to explore if and when it is determined that you can handle them. They are a lot of responsibilities, Sila 919, and you have not shown the aptitude. But by, 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 by trying to process them, would that not mean that, that I am capable? Uh, the mentor uh, sort of just stares at you for a moment. Uh, and she then very quietly says, Sila 919. Yes. Were you given instructions upon receiving your feelings protocols? That they were a luxury not to be used at all times. That they're not real. Correct. Were you also told that for the full suite of emotions, you would need express permission. Yes, ma'am. Well, I think you have proven today that you are not ready for this module. But I, I can grow to, I can grow to understand them. I can grow to have- That control. remains to be seen for now. You will prove yourself worthy of the implants that have been provided. Until then, they will be disabled. May I have a moment before they're disabled? And she looks like she's about to say no and she pauses for a second. And she sort of, you, you watch as her eyes sort of flick over to Jero 426 who's just very impassively watching this whole exchange. Uh, and Sila 919, I don't know that you would be able to identify uh, what flickers through your teacher's eyes at this moment being so new to the, to the feelings protocols. Uh, but there is, for the rest of us watching, we see a bit of sadness, maybe, or, or <sighs> empathy or something. There is something of, there is something slightly softer in this mentor's eyes for the briefest of moments. And then they harden once again. And she says, one minute. Thank you. And... Sila breaks protocol and goes back to her quarters and her eyes are leaking oil down the sides and she goes to her room and the way that she's programmed, her feelings receptors go through a wire in her face. Like there's mm -hmm. a, that is where her connection is. And she looks in the mirror and she says, you won't take them. If my feelings are going to be taken myself, well, I will take them. And in the shape of Scott, uh, Silas Scar, she takes one of her braids and she cuts the shape of the scar. The scar becomes, mm -hmm. that's where her scar comes from is those are her feelings that she cut out before anyone else could. And she looks at herself and she says, your first scar is well earned. Continue your mission. And she goes back to her mentor. And we see that, uh, her mentor is shocked uh, when she sees what, what Sila 919 has done. Uh, but in the end, there isn't much that the mentor can do, you know, to discipline through, through shame or fear or, or really any emotion is now impossible again. Um, 
and and the sila that currently exists wouldn't receive uh you know that sort of feedback with any sort of real uh concept of it and so we watch as uh, Sila 919's classmates through the years uh, get the feelings protocols. Some of them get permission to use them as they all grow older. Many of them, perhaps even most of them, uh, are, are eventually uh, uh, what acclimated to the feelings protocols and become, uh, you know, like so many Monsagani, which is to say, uh, not so very different uh, emotionally from other sentients. Uh, but there is Sila and Sila's scar and Sila's lack of feelings protocols. Um, and if you all couldn't tell, I had no idea until she said it that that's where the scar came from. Okay. Whew. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, any. Anything else? Sorry, I I'm, I will take a moment. Is there anything else you'd like to add for this flashback, Silent 919? It was a brief one, but an impactful one. No. Yeah. What does it matter anyway? And that is for years how Silent 919 moved through life, uh, knowing that she didn't have something that many of her peers did have, but not feeling any kind of way about that. And as the years went on, she, um, the memory files, those brief memory files that existed from those, those moments when she did have the feelings protocols uh, corrode and become buried uh, and are maybe still there, but are rarely opened. Uh, and certainly were not robust enough to help her all those years later when she finally, when her new mentor uh, finally gave her the permission to access those protocols again. So it is uh, with this sense of, because now you know what you lost all for all of those years, it is with this sense of, of renewed sort of, um, I don't know, confidence, determination, to not back down in the face of someone uh, ostensibly superior giving a command that you know, and more importantly, that you feel is incorrect. And so we come back to the crew, to the other reality that Sila is experiencing. Uh, so we head back to the present moment. I don't know what that thing is, but it's endangering my friends. It is endangering my crew. So it dies, and you can go with it if you want to threaten them as well, or you can explain what it is. But as far as I'm concerned, it's it or it's them, and I'm with them. All right. You can almost feel, Sila, in that moment, there's sort of an overlap of the two timelines. What you maybe wish, a version of what you maybe wish you had said all those years ago, you now get to say to the grand, uh, the grand minister of agriculture. And she looks deeply shocked. Uh, she hears what Eli has said to her. She hears now what Sila 919 has put her foot down to say. And she sort of sputters and and tries to uh, tries to respond, but the station master, who has in fact been on board this whole time, but has basically been absolutely terrified into silence in one corner of the bridge, sort of walks over uh, and whispers something to the grand minister and just sort of guides her away from this little moment. Uh, the only thing that you all catch is the station master saying, "Let them work. Let them work." Uh, and so you all, uh, Captain Silent 919, you have uh, the full command of the ship. Uh, what are the orders? You better walk away. So she's provided no further information as to why we should not move forward with taking out the space kraken. So bye. Right. Invicta? Yes. Fire when ready. Oh, I've been ready. Although I was kind of ready to come up to the bridge if I was needed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But it sounds uh, like you have things under control. You, anyone who was watching the Grand Minister at that, uh, when Invictus says, I was ready to come up to the bridge, you all see a little shudder. Uh, Grand Minister is aware of y'all's capabilities, perhaps more so than you all realized originally. Uh, she knows. I mean, there still could be time after we take out this ship. Ooh, okay. <laughs> all right. So who is, uh, the order has been given, uh, Invicta, you are firing on the ship first. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and build these <laughs> contest pools. See if we can blow this last one out the sky or oh, off please. of your ship, actually, I guess. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, this is not staying put, so I'm just going to keep my my things. Oh, okay. Yeah. How stepped are you up. Using? Where am I looking at? Okay, this is um, what I have. And if I, which one has the higher uh, effect die? Lasers or missiles? Uh, lasers has the higher die for you to toss in. It has a D8. The missiles are D6. Well, I think at this close range. I mean. Well, yes and no, right? Because remember, the tactical stations are sort of more towards the front sides of the ship, and this ship is now all the way in the back. So yes, close range, but also there's a bit of like, uh, mm -hmm. the ship itself is providing a bit of cover. So sort of six to one, half dozen the other, to be honest. All right, in that case, I'll just go with the homing missiles. Okay, great. Um, ah, so it's fine. Nope, we're all good. Uh, <laughs> just throwing shit, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we've got your pool. You are uh, you are instigating this contest, so you roll first to set that difficulty. All right, here we go. Ooh. Oh, oh my! All right, well, oh, there went my good luck, but I've got plot points. That's true. So here's what we'll do. I will, uh, if you want to use that to to lessen my little uh, moment here. I will buy. Uh, I will buy those off of you. So you take a plot. Take another plot point right now, uh, and we'll just give you rather than giving you a D eight, we will give you a D six of again. I will let you choose angry, afraid, or insecure. Mm, we're going with angry. Okay, that feels right for this moment because, to be fair, also we don't know that you have failed, just that you are feeling some kind of way about this. Uh, so great. Okay, the number to beat is a seven, so I'm gonna roll my end. Uh, okay, there's an opportunity, uh, but also I rolled my total was a fourteen, uh, and you know what? I am going to. I am going to spend one of this creature's plot points to use one of its abilities, uh, which when it is maneuvering the ship in any way, it is able to, after spending a plot point, it is able to add a third die to its total. Uh, so I'm actually gonna bring that up to, <sighs> nope, to a 17. I do still want that D10 effect die. Okay. You wanna push it, uh, Invicta? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So do I re-roll against yours or do we both re-roll? You will re-roll against mine uh, with the same dice pool that you just used. Oh, great. Um, What was it? Now I'm trying to remember what it was. I know I stepped up intense. <laughs> just okay. glancing at the chat and Dave, B. Dave is just loving his life right now. <laughs> I, I know where you live, B. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's the same pool. I hope it's the same pool. Let me have a look. That looks correct. Yes, absolutely. The suspense. Oof. Okay. Oh, there's an eight right there, you son oh. of a bitch. Oh. Oh, uh, okay, wait a minute, hold on. D6. Okay, so here's what happens. Uh, I'm gonna buy that hitch from you. So take a plot point, but step that angry up to an eight. Then the ship won. So 
it just the homing missiles uh, it, it was the 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 enemy craft is too close to the uh to the ship itself for the missiles to really lock onto it without risking hitting the wistful wish itself uh so they aren't able to to get on there and invicta the the combination of the argument that your captain just had to have with a high-ranking Hotharayan, the fact that you weren't able to follow orders that you were given and destroy this thing, it has been a very stressful day. Both your and their effect die were D10. That means we're going to step the D10 down to a D8, but that still is going to push your angry stress up to a D12. So any more angry stress before Invicta has a chance to recover that and she will be taken out of the scene. Not dead, but removed from the scene until someone can tend to, until she can, you know, calm down or someone can tend to her, whatever it is, right? She is very close to being taken out. For what it's, uh, for the moment, however, uh, she is there, she is mad, but she is still in it, however... This ship now has avoided the missiles from you all, uh, and you can hear a sort of screeching, tearing, uh, and Bertrand comes running up towards the bridge, smacks uh, an automatic lockdown and uh, uh, blast doors, slam shut into place, sealing off the bridge from the aft of the ship, which is excellent timing because you all can see on monitors uh, giving you a view of the cargo hold that this ship has managed to get a tentacle in and has pried open the cargo bay door. Uh, not, not all the way, but there is a, there is a gap now uh, that is of course deep pressurized this area and and the ship has made ingress onto the into the wistful wish immediate responses quickly anyone um i like oh go uh, ahead Sila. <laughs> so do i have a clear line to this stupid thing <laughs> yeah absolutely fantastic what Li line of communication or like line of fire <laughs> uh line to inflict some pain so, oh, in that case, uh, no, but you could, you could without suiting up because you're Montsegane. So you don't need, to, uh, you would need to worry about the pressure difference, but not the lack of air back there now that it's been open. So yes, you could absolutely run back there. I don't need to go all the way. I just need okay. to get at least halfway there okay. and then have right. one. Of course. So you're gonna see like one curl like start to pop out, pop out, pop out, but it starts to like spike at the end as it's coming out. And it goes through the slit in the door uh -huh. and aims for the eye of Ooh. the Kraken. I wanna go <laughs> as far through its head with my curl as as <laughs> possible. I would say as humanly possible, but I'm not here. Right, right, so, right, right, right. Okay, yeah, let's let's do uh, let's roll some dice. All right. Uh yeah, and then I will get to to the rest of you uh as you see your captain running back and flinging bits of of her multi-purpose hair uh through uh through some, you know, ducts or something to get back to the rear of the ship. Where is here we go. Close this out, clear that out. Um I'm going to give them this do you have any stress, Captain Silent 919? No, not at the moment, right? Mm -mm. No, <laughs> we went back and no forth for a while, but you're you're clear. Yay is chilling. Um, so let me do. Obviously, I'm gonna have to go with weaponized braids. Obviously, yep, yeah, love that. Love that for you. Um, <laughs> I've got the I have to use that D4 that's in my in my bowl, don't I? Uh, in which one? Wait, hold on. Um, I had the D4 from my stress that I never- Oh, I yes, had corrupted. So yes, that tosses in, correct. Thank you, yes. All right, so I am also going to Oh, I want to use this D10 for power just because- I mean, if there was ever a moment, talk about a power play. All right, so that's a four, a six, a 10. And, oh, do I get one more or no? Uh, you can, depends I on where it's from. I haven't used the distinction. It's for a distinction. Uh, yeah, so, go for it, yeah. 
So with that, I'm going to go do it right or get out of my way. Okay. I love it. You are mm -hmm. initiating this contest. So you roll first. Okay, not bad. Uh, so that corrupted, uh, that corrupted stress clears because you've used the D4 now. I'm gonna buy that hitch off of you, give you a plot point and give you a D6 of, hmm, I'm actually gonna give you a D6 of injured stress. And I'll tell you why once the contest is complete. So 14 is the number to beat for me. Let's see. The rolls are That's, garbage. Th my rolls have been so swingy today, but that was a 17. So does Sila 919 want to push her luck? I wanted to talk junk and have it work. Um, <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Same dice pool, although you don't have to include the D4 this time because you've cleared that. Uh, so no D4, but otherwise same dice pool. Roll again. 17 is the number to beat. All right, so it was the, hold on, eight, 10, six, and. Uh, and I think that's it, because the other one was the four, right? Yeah, okay, Oof, so close, but a 16, not gonna do it. So uh, let's see, oh no. Okay. So uh, you will notice that uh, my, I think you can all see this as well, those of you watching. So you uh, will notice that my effect die on my last roll was a D10 and Captain Silent 919's was a D6. This is the first time I think in a contest uh, that the effect die haven't been either tied or the loser had a higher die. When the winner has a higher ranked effect die, that rank is the amount of stress that gets added to you which means, if I'm doing my calculations correct, that uh, Silent 919, your injured stress is now going to push beyond a D12, which takes you out of the scene. And so here's what happens. Silent 919 sends her uh, weaponized hair through back to the cargo bay doors, sends it inside uh, of, this, of this thing, this ship, this whatever it is. Uh, and you all just watch as Captain Silent 919 is all of a sudden pulled yanked forwards, slams against the blast doors that Bertrand closed to seal the bridge and collapses to the ground. And you can see a little short where that particular hair has been completely pulled from Captain Silent 919's head. To be very clear, you still have your weaponized hair, uh, but she is uh, down. What? Every curl counts. I'm oh yeah, to absolutely. This is just gentle. one. <laughs> Oh, oh, excuse me, I didn't realize. Well, uh, that is, that is uh, at the moment you are missing that one curl and are laid out on the ground. You all see as you scramble to presumably, and we'll, we'll, we'll deal with this uh, probably next week, but as you all scramble to check on Captain Silo 919 to keep your eye on whatever is going on at the rear of the ship, you watch as something oozes, squirms, squeezes its way through the opening that has been created in the cargo bay door and comes and eventually uh, slithers down the inside of the cargo bay door and sets itself down in the cargo hold of the Wistful Wish. This creature has a a clearly some sort of space suit almost, but it is transparent and thin and you can barely see that it's there. And underneath this suit is this creature. It is, it has a large sort of long body at the top and it has these six tentacles that extend from it, each holding a different type of horrifying looking device. It has two much longer tentacles that extend eight, 10, 12 feet from its body, dragging behind it. And this creature suddenly lights up with these iridescent iridescent red and 
orange lights that zoom up and down the sides of its body as you all can hear coming from the cargo bay that same wet squelching laugh <laughs> and that's where we're going to leave it for this week oh gross you anyhow normally i really really love you <laughs> sir i B Dave, I wash no, no. my hands. B Dave's not here. <laughs> did B Dave say you had to make that sound though? You are correct. He did not. Nope, that's all me. <laughs> Can't pretty blame sure. him for that one. Pretty sure B Dave said that. I'm pretty sure he said that. I, I'm sure noise. I can find a message somewhere where he said, "Make the most horrible squelching mouth noise that you are capable of." Hmm. Well, because oh. it's a jelly, not a mouth noise. <laughs> Let's do the outros while I compose myself. Oh my goodness. We'll go in the same order that we started with. Uh, thank you all so much for hanging out. This was, um, let's say thrilling today. How's that for everybody? Uh, let's go around or down the line actually. Oh, since we're in a different screen, we'll go down the line. How lovely. Uh, so we'll start with you, Tanya. Let us know who you are. Uh, well, where other than here, your own channel, we can find you on the internet. Uh, yeah. uh, I am disgusted because I felt that in the fiber of my being and I'm going to yell at you later. Yep. Um, you can find me here. You can find me on Rivals Waterdeep. We have three episodes left in season eight. Um, I'm DMing this season and I don't know if the rivals are ever getting out of jail at the rate they're going. So we'll see. Um, and then you can find me here. But tomorrow, 1 to 2 p.m. Central, I will be playing Tiltify Santa. I will be visiting uh, people fundraising through Tiltify on their channels and playing Santa with their money, not mine. Um, so <laughs> if you are fundraising on Tiltify, please tweet out and use the hashtag claws your cause or Tiltify 2020, so we can be on the lookout for uh, someone to maybe stop by and, and give you a little holiday cheer to your fundraising. Otherwise, find me everywhere at Cypher Tier, and uh, here, Twitter, Instagram, even though I haven't gone anywhere in nine months, so there's nothing on my Instagram, but the random photo. So come say hi, hang out, be nice, and uh, we're going to hopefully not be grossed out next week. <laughs> I, I think I've made my point so we can avoid any more squelchy mouth noises. Moving on down the line, next up is Christina, who is mad at me for saying squelchy mouth noises. <laughs> it's gross. Um, <laughs> hi, my, I'm Christina. I play Captain Silo 919 tonight and had a lot of uh, stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, oh, honey, I'm so excited by your facial expressions because you had no idea where it was going. And I so didn't. it was very much just like, and that moment that I realized, Christina, that was beautiful. Thank you. I made you cry your own tears. You did. I made you cry your own tears. Yeah, you did. Uh, so this week you can find me on Monday at one o'clock on twitch.tv backslash C and E games, where myself and Mr. Mark Meir do a game called Improvised Champions. There's a playthrough of Idol Champions, and we do a sports type commentary over it and it's really fun and we just make up stuff and we also voice all of the npcs and characters in the game so that's really fun for us to do and immediately after that at three you can catch myself and michael Kritz over there where are you on this screen? Uh, oh you know yeah. where he is <laughs> so you can catch michael and myself on twitch.tv backslash lfm underscore network where we are on Rise of the Veiled Alliance journey to the Obsidian Spire. I believe we are coming up on the episode where you might get to see me fight with myself. And I'm very excited about that because it's very fun to fight with yourself. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's great. Um, so I hope you guys have a great week and make good choices. And I'll see you next Sunday here for another End of the Mother Lions. Uh, I love it. Yes. All of that. Uh, let's see, moving on down the line, DJ. Hi, I'm DJ Knight, space and sci-fi streamer. Mostly play video games, make weird noises. I've had a headache for like seven hours now. So I've just been uh, like silently chilling over here. But uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for coming to hang out. Uh, I'm gonna be playing a lot of cyberpunk starting the day it comes out and maybe earlier. I don't know, maybe, we'll see. 
there's her. You go take care of yourself. Last but most certainly not least in our lineup, I lie, Michael. Hello. Uh, um, so yeah, that's me, Michael Sinclair II. Uh, I play Ila here. Um, and then uh, the other places you can find me is like Christina said on the LFM network on Mondays at 3 p.m. I believe PST um, where I play. Oh man, I already forgot his name. Anyway, I play amazing uh, like a horticulturalist uh, necromancer. Uh, just amazing, amazing character. I, I just forget the name. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> so a necromancer. Uh, uh, yeah yep mm -hmm. um anyway uh i now also play besky nevering on faith forge academy podcast there's a lot to keep track of folks i also have a, a physics you. final on on wednesday so like brain is is pudding um and then uh you could find me on my twitter at michael Kritz. you can find me at lots of places on the internet as michael Kritz, uh, as well as twitch uh i think since my schedule will be clearing up Wednesday, you should be able to see me actually streaming again, um, playing World of Warcraft, probably doing the raid, the raids, uh, because I'm up at that level. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, so we'll see if we get into that. I think we will. And yeah, that's me. All right. Uh, before I do my outro and thank our sponsors again, do hang out. We are going to spread the motherland's love. Uh, and tonight we're going to be go going to raid Data Dave. Uh, so don't go anywhere. Uh, let's spread that motherland's love, even if you can't hang out over there for too long. Uh, we like to take our community many places. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. My name is Eugenio. Uh, I'm online on Twitter and Twitch as DM Jazzy Hens. Uh, you, can, I, you can check me out uh, streaming RPG video games on my channel here on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. Uh, tomorrow night, if you want more of me in space, I'm a player on the Roll20 Twitch channel uh, playing in a game of Burn Bright, GM'd by Celeste Konowich of the Venture Maidens podcast. Every Wednesday, I release uh, a new episode of my actual play Dungeons & Dragons podcast podcast called The Last Refuge. You can check that out as well. Uh, and this Wednesday, I think, right, Tanya? Tanya and I are going to be on uh, Back to the Motherlands, the amazing talk show on the Dicey Amazon channel. Uh, so come check us out on Wednesday night. We're going to talk a little bit more behind the scenes stuff uh, about the show, about the game, uh, and about all of that good stuff here just two weeks before our season one finale. Wild, I can't believe it's already here. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Once again, a huge thank you to uh, Die Hard Dice for the Musalian Sky set. You can check out their stuff at dieharddice.com. Giant thank you to Blue Microphones for the tech that they've given us. Check out their stuff at bluemic.com and congratulations to Davey Young who won the uh, giveaway this evening. Congratulations to you. Thank you to Cortex by Fandom. Huge thank you for helping us out, uh, putting together the mechanics for Into the Motherlands. And of course, thank you to Twitch. Uh, for all of your support. We thank you so very much. Be back next week, Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, 12 a.m. GMT, uh, for Into the Motherlands, session 11 of 12. Can you believe it? We're going to do it. We will see you then. In the meantime, hang out. We're going to go raid Data Dave. Stay safe, stay healthy, wear a mask on your mouth and nose, and happy gaming, y'all. <laughs>